All right. Somebody new moved in next to me in my apartment. Mm-hmm. And she has friends, like lots of friends. Like I saw seven people. Wait, is that what was apartment. loud on your story earlier? Yes. Was that outside though, or was that just no, like next that door? That was literally next door. Like on the same wall as where you were sitting? Yeah. Jeez. She was like in her bedroom or something. I don't know. So another shot glass. Got to remember to pack that before I go to bed. Nice. Keep getting these one off shot glass orders, but it's fine. Whatever. A dollar's a dollar. Yep. That's what we need t-shirts to say. A dollar's a dollar. Yes. Wheel Talk Pottery. And they'd be like, what is that? A dollar is a dollar. Wheel Talk Podcast. We need to fucking do it. We just need to do it. That's going to be on you, because I'm not a graphics person. I'll do it. I'll do it. How much money do we have in our account? Um... I guess that's one of those where you got to order it all at once, right? Yeah, because it would be nice to do it when we have money in the account, at least. Well, the good thing is it re-ups every month. So on the first yeah. of the month, I believe, is when they deposit the money. I think there's like 180 bucks in there or something. Nice. Okay, so we have something to work with, you know? Yep, 180 Cool. Yeah. I mean, obviously, it's going to be 25 bucks or whatever a month for our stuff, so... Yeah. Or whatever that is. I think it's 24 or something like that. Um, You're going to say, what are we talking about? Yeah. Are we doing long- two short episodes? Or are we doing one long one? I feel like we should do a long one. What are we talking we about, do a short though? One? I don't know. We said short ones, but... I don't, do you have a about? topic that you're passionate about that the long one could fill? No. Our last one that we recorded was about an hour and 30 or an hour and 40, I think. Yeah. All right. I'm looking at the stuff at the top. The Listen ones that questions? are kind of. Uh, yeah. The ones that say short episode. Um, yeah. Yeah, they're kind of batched based on if they're related or not. Best selling pieces you shop at markets besides mugs. Do you get tired of talking about shows? I don't. <laughs> <laughs> Do you get tired of talking I about shows? I don't know. Shows? No, not really. I don't get tired of talking about almost anything. You know what we should do is look at one of our early episodes and talk about something that we started talking about and see if we can rehash it. Like motivation as a maker? (laughs) Yeah, we should talk about that. That was episode one. Yeah, because neither of us have listened to it recently, right? No. We should record it. And then see if it matches up at all. I'm trying to remember what it... I mean, I could look at the description of what we wrote about it. Yeah, look at that. Let's see. Episode one. Oh, man. <clears throat> Takes me back. Mm. On this it episode, be Brian and Becca discuss motivation as a maker. Becca speaks on her perspective as a full-time potter and studio owner, and Ryan as a part-time maker while he works a typical nine-to-five during the day. Each maker, artist, craftsperson, small business owner gets motivated by different things, and we share some of our experiences related to overcommitting, list-making, goal-setting, selling at shows, and why you should focus your time on what you love doing. Bam. I think that would be fun. Especially since it's like almost exactly two years. August 22nd. That actually would be kind of fun. It's kind of timely, right? Yeah. Two years of wheel talk last week. And then this one would be motivation as a maker. Re. What do you call it? Revamp. Revamp. Revamp or re. Uh. 
replay. Heart no. heart deuce. No. No. Um, <laughs> I was thinking of those. Do you ever see those like deuce where it's like D E U X? Mm-hmm. I'm like, what? Is, what is that? Is that just like for Do? like? Do? Do. Is that just for like <coughs> satire or something? I feel like no. that's where I see it. <coughs> no, I don't think so. That one was 45 minutes long. Okay, let's see. I mean, we can do a listener question as oh, well. Yeah. yeah, let's do that. That'll be fun. All right. Yeah, that, that sounds good. That might Actually, be also a fun question to ask somebody, like, if you wanted to hear our perspectives now on any of the past topics that we've talked about. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, I think I have something wrong with my teeth. Like what? You got some pain? It's just, like, kind of sore. In your, in your gum or like your actual tooth? Right. Um, Do you have a short answer question that stands out to you? My Some of my fellow potters fire at a tone 10 in an electric kiln. And my mind was blown. What damage are they causing to their kilns? I know it's possible. But what's the cost? Okay. Do we want to move that up? Yeah, are you on your... Can, can you do it? Yep, yep. Because I can't. Yeah. Then we can talk about that crazy picture we saw on Clay Buddies. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> That's where you just find a huge trash can and just <laughs> dump that bottom ring. <laughs> Fuck, man. Fuck that. Fuck. All right, is there another one in here? Another short one? I feel like we have, have a one? lot. We have a lot in here. Um, man, I want to answer some of these art show ones at some point. What was the first piece you ever sold? How about that? That's like the oldest question. I don't think that's technically the oldest. Sometimes I put them at the bottom. Sometimes I put uh-huh. them at the top. I mean, this fucking anagram one's been around forever. <laughs> yeah, we're not going to answer that one. <coughs> We uh, could do how to clean kiln shelves of crumbling applied to a thick kiln wash. Yeah, where's that one at? Uh, Down towards the bottom. And that goes with the kiln situation. Bats, ceramics. Mm-hmm. All right. What's the deal with pour overs? And do people even fucking use them? Chicken, chicken chit, chicken. chicken I think sure. it's. I think it's chicken chit. I think it's actually chit, chicken chit. I don't think it is. Uh, what's their name? Are you looking it up? It's chicken shit. S H I T. Yes. Okay. All right. I thought it was like a play on words where they had like chit or something. Chicken shit. Like chitlins. No, like shit, but they don't say shit. Oh. <laughs> Um, (laughs) my oil oil bottles keep looking like douches how do i change that (laughs) was that chicken shit yes I think you saw that and you were like, what the fuck is this? <laughs> I did. I was like, who the fuck? What the fuck? <laughs> I don't th- I, I don't know what a douche looks like, but I don't want to Google it. So. <laughs> you don't want to Google it? I mean, I guess I can. Let me you Google that incognito. I know. Yes, yeah, sort of. Yes. It's to clean out the, the undercarriage. The butthole. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> incognito window that <laughs> it's trying to autocorrect it to uh, douchebag. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, 
you have a control of what the shape is, though. You don't have to make it look like that. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. I mean, honestly, it looks like one of the things that you, like, clean a baby's nose out with, the little, like, squeeze bottle. Not, not, the not snot sucker. sucker thing. Mm-hmm. Jeez. All right. That'll be fun for whoever what watches a this. <clears throat> <laughs> <laughs> I, just, I just saying it must be some sort of a weird sensation. <laughs> <sighs> All right. I um, think every week I come down here and I just look at these plants that Rebecca planted in the window and then let fucking die. <laughs> <laughs> she, she plants them and lets them die. <laughs> They're all dead. All of them. I think there's even a fucking cactus up there that's dead. Is there even water in that room? Yeah. Yeah. There's water. There's a sink? Yeah. Okay. Over there. Yeah, there's there's no uh no reason for that. No reason. Why don't you water them? You're in here once They're a week. Dead. Why don't you you should have kept up with them? I wasn't appointed the task. I didn't want to water them if they were already watered. Hey, uh, hey Rebecca, uh, these plants are dying. Do you uh, need some help? There we go. All right. So we got the questions ready. Yes. Actually, I don't. Where's the other one? Oh, I moved. Oh, actually, I didn't move that one up. Let me. You said, yeah, you didn't move. That I moved one, one of them up. I didn't move the other one up. Yeah. There we go. All righty. There we go. I got the seconds again on here. I got that up here, so that's okay. good. Where is the second one? No, no, no. The seconds hand. The seconds is timer is what I meant. I know, but where is the answer? They're, where are the... they're both oh, at the they're very all top. The way up. Oh, okay. All the way up. All the way up. Ow! I'm not announcing the news on here until we get closer to it. Okay. FYI. <laughs> I figured. Ugh, I figured as much. Are you? Uh, have you been sick the last couple days? Are you good now? I'm just sniffly, and obviously have like. I mean, you yeah. sound a lot better. Like you're yeah. not as nasally and. Yeah, I just have like. Um, like a slight cough, and then um, just my nose is runny. Gotcha. All right, let's move this over here. Am I going to read it all what the first episode thing was? Or Yeah. <laughs> okay. I'm trying to figure out where my window should be here. All right, did you test or did you need a test? I tested. All right, I trust it. I don't think I need to. Has the internet been any better on here? <clears throat> or the connection? It seems pretty smooth. Yeah, it seems. I think it feel like it's better. That's good. Nice. All right. Do you want to start at thirty seconds after? <clears throat> yes. Or thirty-five seconds after? Yeah, thirty. Ready? Got it. Got it. Started. We're live. <laughs> oh, <clears throat> Ryan's getting sick. No, I'm not. Yes, you are. False. Correct. Correct We're that it's false. Live. But Becca's not sick anymore. I tried to do the high pitch, but it didn't work. You want to try it again? No. 
<laughs> the moment's passed. Moment's passed. Hi. Hi. Drinking a Bev, huh? Yeah, I still have a few left. Haven't seen old Bev in a while. Beverly. Mm hmm. Beverly. Beverly, Beverly. Drinking a Bev. I found it in my fridge today. Nice. What, what, which version is it, or which flavor is it? The Sauve Blanc, which is my second favorite. That's my like favorite. just a nice mid-range white. Yes. Sweet-ish. It's just like right down the middle. Yeah. I feel like it's the intro white. Mm, maybe a Pinot is the intro. That's like a house white. Not Pinot. Um, not Pinot. Uh, the... Uh, Riesling is like an intro white because it's Ooh, like sweeter. I love Riesling. Yeah. Riesling Moscato is my jam. Moscato is not Riesling. Right? I said Riesling and Moscato. I meant oh, Riesling and, and Moscato. Moscato or Riesling slash Moscato. Yeah. Pinot is my jam. I don't know what I'm thinking. Today's been a long day. Um, yes. How are you? I'm doing all right. Unloaded a kiln today. Yeah. I'm um, getting ready for my show this weekend in Lexington, so we'll see how that goes. Are you doing the uh, wood something? Woodland. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, Bear reached out and was like, hey, if you need anything while you're in Lexington this weekend, let me know. Yeah. He's so. really awesome. He'll probably stop by. He asked me if I was going, and I was like, no, why? And he was like, <laughs> fine, no tacos for you. And <laughs> He's going like, to make you tacos, or he knows a good taco spot? There's a good taco place. Yeah. Ooh. Maybe I'll need to ask him that. Yeah, it's right by his house. Okay. So, yeah, yeah we'll see how that show goes. It's a two-day. <clears throat> Prior to this year, that was my best show I'd ever done, which I think we talked about it in, like, episode six or something like that. So. Wow. Yeah, we'll see how it goes. I think it'll be a good turnout because they canceled it last year, and – it's it's a really big park and it's a pretty good size show. There's a lot of different vendors there and it's it's an nice. art show, so you get some buyers. Nice. That'll be great. So I have good high hopes. Gonna bring plenty of product. Yeah, get it. Get it. So that's pretty much all that's going on over here. Um I expect a massively like a text at the end of the day saying like I fucking sold this much. <laughs> at the end of each day. <laughs> yes. That's what All I right. expect. Yeah, I feel like I'm going to break 4,000. Hell yeah. We'll see. But I think that's a good... I think that's a good guess. I mean, I'm kind of confident yeah. in that. It's two days? Yeah. Saturday, Sunday. It's 10 to 6 and 10 to 5, so... As long as the weather's good, fingers crossed, knock on yeah. wood, all those things that the weather's good. But it's yeah. been a lot more enjoyable out outside these days than the last couple of months have been. So I, th I think it'll be a good time of year for people to get out. That's good. Yeah. Hell yeah. People want to be outside right now. It's like not too hot, not too cold. I mean, it's still fucking hot, but it's like less hot or yeah. something. All right, what's what's new with you? I know somebody, you've got, uh, you've got somebody, cat saga going on. Yeah, but first, somebody charged. Um, I have an Amazon Prime credit card that I use to get uh, AirPods. Remember when I was at your house in October? Yeah. And um, I've never used it. I like bought the AirPods, paid it off. And, and you still was, have the card, but you like threw it in a drawer or something like that. I might have actually cut it up. I don't know. I don't know where the card is. Um, Did you cancel I, it, though? No. You just cut it up? Yes. Maybe. Does that do anything? You know what? I don't know. <laughs> and, so what uh, happened with it? So, um, so, I... I kept getting these emails with this bill and um, I so I kept getting these emails with these bills and I was like, this is a scam. Like, I haven't used this card. Yeah. And then 
and it was like you're a past due. Um, I'm sure they're billing so, account activities inside of Amazon somewhere, right? Like you can look at your account and see the activity on it, or it's a completely separate account with MasterCard or something like that. It's a completely separate account with Chase, but it's through Prime. So you like go through Prime to get to Chase. Anyway, so um, <coughs> the bill that came in the mail was $444. And mm-hmm. keep in mind, I've never used this card. And um, <laughs> except for once. Uh, So then I call the phone number on the paper bill. Mm -hmm. And I was like, I need to talk to a person, need to talk to a person. I'm not giving you any of my information, need to talk to a person. And um, the last question that I heard, I think, was, can you please input your whole social security number? That sounds like a scam. Yeah, and I was like, uh, no, no, I, I would go directly to Amazon, go into the account where I know I can trust the website, and then go into the chase and see the account activity, and then I would contact them from there. That's what I would. That do. would be great, but I have no idea how to get into Chase to see the account activity. Um, oh. So uh, anyway, I found Chase's phone number on Google instead, and uh, oh, and she answered the phone, and she did not identify herself. You know, like. When they identify themselves, they say, like, my ID is one, two, five, six, seven, or whatever. Um, so then I called Chase and I was like, oh, yeah, that definitely was a scam. And so I got the whole fraud thing and disputed the charge and yada, yada, yada. So that was fun. So uh, they did actually paying. spend money on your card and they actually sent uh-huh. you a scam letter. Yeah, to pay it, to pay it to them. Yeah. Gotcha. I'm like, that's, I mean, it was pretty clever. I'm not going to lie. Kind of clever. Kind of clever. I mean, they control um, so, where, you know, what goes in the letter. I'm sure it looked legit. Yeah. They can just copy and paste images. and Yeah, it looks exactly legit. So, um, yeah. So, keep that in mind. Don't do that. Um, and, like, I never usually go straight from it, but I kind of wanted to see. Um, hi, Charles. And, uh, yeah, so that happened this morning. And then um, a week ago, I adopted a cat because my friend... It showed up at my friend's house and she couldn't take it. And so I uh, um, took her in after some thought. And then. Uh, <sighs> She's been getting adjusted her- to Lloyd a little bit. and Yeah, I named her Babs and we're having a whole saga on Instagram. And multiple people have messaged me saying that this is better than any drama on TV. <laughs> uh-huh. Somebody was like, this is better than the real Housewives of Brooklyn or something. I don't know. I don't know any of the Housewives. I'm sure there's but, uh, plenty of things better than that. Yeah, I'm sure there is. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, yeah, it's been fun. Babs and Lloyd. I named her Babs, so it sounds like an old married couple that fights all the time, because that's what they're going to do, probably. <laughs> so and she is much my... younger than Lloyd, correct? She is... We think she's much younger than Lloyd. The parents and the owners have not contacted me. I mean, they did contact me, and then when I tried to arrange a pickup, they did not show up. So, um, we're considering her mine, and, uh, but, uh, some cat whisperer online told me that she's actually more dominant than he is, and he's, like, scared of her. Really? How yeah. do they how do they tell that from just because Lloyd is the one that's doing mannerisms and she's just chilling? Yeah. Oh, I'm going to read you what she said. She has a degree in animal behavior. Wow. Which is fucking cool. Charles is fucking on it today. I know Charles is. Whoa, Charles. Um, okay, she says not sure this is great information for anybody that has cats. I did not know this. Not sure if you know, but cats have a 4D territory. The obvious 3D that they live in, but also time and height is a huge safety blanket for them and a dominance display. If she was up on the ledge that she was on first, she's saying to Lloyd, I can be up here and no threat. Look, I'm hunched up and not in the way, like, but I'm not going to bully you, you know? 
Oh, no, I'm not going to be bullied. And her ears say, I'm listening, but I'm not looking to threaten you. The fact he jumps up, on he jumped up on the couch and says, this is still my territory. But then when he approaches on the couch and she was higher, oh, no, sorry, they were both on the same ledge at that point. And then he approached on the couch and she was higher and he got down and he says, I'm not willing to fight for this territory. He is willing wow. to share. He's just not 100% ready. That's what she said. I'm like, what the fuck? You're a cat whisperer. And then Jeez. she says, she says, yep, he looks quite comfy. She is more standoffish, I think. I predict she will be the boss once they settle down. I meant to say, watch the time of day when they are in a certain spot, and you'll see they have a pattern to their territory. Well, it's the rug, the safety rug that I have that Lloyd loves. And also she loves to. Um, might be Lloyd's now. Soon it might be Babs between certain hours. And the windowsill might be his or hers depending on the time. Jeez. Isn't that crazy? <laughs> the ear thing is interesting because uh, I noticed that like Lloyd's were forward. You could see his his ears. He could hear forward. And then when my cats get like defensive and stuff, their ears go backward. Right. And, yeah. Like, well, the, the, the air thing. canals are facing backward. So it's like. Yeah, like that's the thing that's been weird about this whole thing. And everybody's like, he's so, he's going to attack her and stuff. And I was and like, stuff. yeah, and I'm like, no, Lloyd's not aggressive. He has no idea why he's hissing at this fucking cat. Like, he, he's mm-hmm. not an aggressive cat. He, um, like, he can get territorial, but as far as, like, fighting and stuff goes, that doesn't usually happen all that much. And so, um, yeah, and so... Uh, the first time that he, his ears went back even a little was when he was on the couch and he like jumped up to see her. Mm-hmm. And then they almost touched noses. Whoa. It was a great moment. <laughs> That's fun to hear. I think that would be fun for her to just talk about that on her Instagram. <laughs> like, here's a video of a cat doing something, and here's what's going on in this video. Here's yeah, what so you can crazy. break it down. Like, yeah, it's so cool. Um, they would get tons of followers if they shared that. <laughs> I know, right? Do a TikTok, sweetie Dahlia, darling, darling, sweetie darling. Uh, I see, sweetie darling. Um, anyway, do a TikTok. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, it was. I'm so glad she messaged me because I didn't even know that was a thing. Um, but I mean, it looks like I've been approaching the situation correctly. So nice. Yeah, slow and steady. It looks like. Yeah. And you're yeah. not you're not like getting in between them too. Mm. I would never like if he started duking it out with her. I'd probably just kind of like settle down, see how they did it, and then if he kept on going at her, I'd probably lock her in a room. Yeah. Yeah. So, cool. Okay, that's enough about us. Um. We're going to do listener questions. The listener questions. All right. Numero uno. Some of my fellow potters fire at cone 10 in electric kiln, and my mind was blown. What damage are they causing to their kilns? I know it's possible, but at what cost? That is from Mudheads Pottery on Instagram. So, what do you got to say about the electric kilns firing at cone 10? What do you think? I mean, I think as long as the kiln... Are there kilns that are rated above cone 10? Probably not, right? Probably yeah. electric kilns? Yeah. Mm-mm. So, I mean, we've talked about it before. It's kind of like if your kiln can... Or if your car can go to 150, you're pushing it to like 140 or yeah. 145. You know, you're just using it to its full capacity. Um, I mean, it's rated to do that. So, I would put it out there that you're probably going to wear your elements out faster because you're using all the power on them on a regular basis but yeah. i mean the results are a little bit different you're fully vitrifying your clay you have different colors you can achieve i mean i feel like these days people are doing a lot more mid-range i don't know if it's just for cost effectiveness you're using less power it takes less time your turnaround time is so. a lot quicker yeah and a lot of colors can be adapted from cone 10 to cone 6 so I think it's yeah it, it's just uh i don't know do you see a 
do you have a tendency to know like what types of people fire cone tin or like is it just long you know long-term potters that have been doing it for a long time no i think that people do it for specific reasons i know that i mean there's no question that cone tin pottery is more um durable than cone six pottery like maybe just a little bit you know um typically it vitrifies at a higher like or a lower percentage, I suppose. But, um, yeah, a lot of it has to do with, like, the glazes and stuff. I know Forest Ceramic Company fires to Cone 8, uh, and that's because of their clay. They want to vitrify it at a certain rate, and he just, he did a ton of, like, I, I believe he did a ton of testing and stuff um, to that. Uh, yeah, I mean, I think you're right. I mean, it's not really hurting the kiln by any means. It, there's no damage to the kilns. It's just wearing those elements down faster. So it's like instead of changing out your elements every 100 firings, maybe you're changing it out every 75, you know? So that's what I would probably say. Yeah, it's it's probably similar to if you get a kiln that's a cone 6 kiln and you're firing a cone 6. You know, if you have a cone 10 kiln, it's going to be a little bit nicer on your elements and you're going to get a little more life out of it so yeah. that's why you've recommended in the past like get even you said you had a cone eight kiln right yeah i had a cone eight and that was like better f for cone six than a cone six kiln but not quite as good as a cone 10 kiln yeah did i mean you, like cone did you find eight, yourself cone pushing it or? Cone eight kilns should really just be for a low fire you can do cone six in a cone eight kiln but it's going to push it farther than it wants to be. So, the ele so like, I would primarily bisque in that kiln. Yeah. That was, like, my bisque kiln, and then my two other kilns were my glaze kilns. I mean, yes, sometimes I glaze in that kiln, but very rarely, um, unless it was, like, necessary. So, uh, but, yeah, the uh, cone should be for low fire, typically. If you're looking for a cone six, if you're going to fire cone six, you should be getting a cone 10 kiln. No questions. Yeah. And I, I think of it kind of like the elements that are going in a cone 10 kiln and you're firing a cone six. It feels like you have like heavier duty elements than you need. Yeah. So you just got like the super duty version yeah. of the elements that are just going to withstand. A yeah. Long and if you're, time. if you are firing cone 10 in a cone 10 kiln, definitely don't be firing that f motherfucker fast. You need to be firing it low and slow. So, um, because... Or medium? The, no. No? Slow. Slow. Okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> like, if you were firing a cone 10 kiln to a cone 10, you need to be firing it slow. Because those elements, if you push those to their, like, max, at the max speed that you can go, you're, that's like, that's like, that you're is... You're just, like, abusing it. <laughs> Yeah, you're just wasting a bunch of fucking time and um, and money. <laughs> well, you're trying to get quicker turnaround, but you're you're costing yourself time by wearing them down quicker. Right. Yeah. So, um, yeah, but that's that's what I would recommend. I mean, you should be firing your kiln at slow regardless. Right? I always fire fast. Uh, Rebecca always fires fast, too. And it's like I'm like, no. Maybe I'll try medium. I don't know. You should try medium. I mean, I, I just get used to the times of fast. Like, I think my kiln fired in, like, eh, I can't, I don't want to say it because I can't remember exactly, but I want to say it was, like, six hours or something in my smaller Olympic kiln yesterday. Fast, it's cone fast. six. It's too <clears> fast. That's what happened. That's what <laughs> That's what happened. <laughs> cone uh, cone five, five minute hold, I think is what I did. I need to do it a little bit longer of a hold, but yeah. Actually, I wonder if my. I wonder if I, I'm trying to remember the Bartlett. Does the Bartlett have a medium? Yeah. I'm trying to remember if it does. Oh, because no, I think it, it has a I think it has slow glaze, fast glaze or slow bisque. Yeah. Fast bisque. Slow glaze, fast glaze. It doesn't have a medium, but scuts do, correct? Scuts do have a medium. Maybe that's why, because mm -hmm. I've never programmed a custom 
thing and it's just easy to hit, yeah. push the button and do it but yeah do you know what's really nice is that the genesis like the brand the fancy one has a slow medium slow like, medium so like it goes slow at the uh, beginning and then ramps up once it gets to a certain point i think so yeah it was so, it's so nice when you're just like i don't want to go slow i don't want to go medium i'd like to go slow medium i'd like to go sh medium i'd like to go sh medium <laughs> <laughs> sledium <laughs> um yeah no that's super nice yeah I really that's want my cake. laziness you want cake yeah. Yeah, I like since like six o'clock I've wanted a piece of cake. <laughs> I got this uh we had that show on the seventh or whatever, the day we got back, or the day after we got back. Yeah. I got some carrot cake from the guy next to us. We always get the summer squash crust pizza um from him. So we got some uh-huh. of those in our freezer and then he had some carrot cake. So I got a little tin of carrot cake. Oh, I love carrot cake. I do too. It was good. Oh. I mean, I probably took a week to eat it because I ate like a little bit at a time. But Adri, that's a hint. So good. Next I love time, carrot cake too. Next time we come, Deidre, carrot cake, carrot cake. I'm like cheesecake and then carrot cake just below that. I am rainbow chip, then carrot cake. Rainbow chip is that like funfetti? It is like Funfetti, but Rainbow Chip is, like, different frosting. Rainbow Chip. Oh, is that where there's chips in the frosting itself? Yes. Okay. It, it's not like chocolate chips, right? It's, like, sweet they're like balls waxy, or something. Weird chips. Yeah. Oh, okay. I kind of remember that. I think they okay. discontinued the frosting, but I think they brought it back. Okay. It makes me think of like Dunkaroos with the. Uh... Yes. Yes. It's the same frosting. I was just going to. Oh my gosh. That. Dunkaroos is so good. I love Dunkaroos. Have you found them at Kroger? They're there. Are they? I don't go to Kroger. Rachel's gone to Kroger in shops for us for well, the last tell Rachel year plus. Says Dunkaroos. <laughs> I mean, I heard Dunkaroos made a comeback, but they were in like Walmart and they were only the chocolate ones or something. I don't no, know. No. They have the rainbow chip ones at Kroger and 7 Eleven. All right, we don't have 7-Eleven here, but Kroger, make yeah. it happen. I saw him. Adding that to the list. Okay. Yeah, anyway, um, moving on. <laughs> Do you want to read the second question? <laughs> yeah. Uh, this is our short commercial break for Dunkaroos. Um, okay, the second question is, how do you clean shelves of crumbling, in quotations, applied too thick kiln wash? Heavy grit sandpaper? Question mark. No. If you want to take all day, <laughs> that's from <laughs> Bats Ceramics. Bats Ceramics, yes. Um, no, ideally, have you ever cleaned a kiln show? Yeah, angle grinder. There you go. Angle, angle grinder. grinder. You can get you can get an angle grinder at, if you have Harbor Freight nearby. You can get an angle grinder for like twelve bucks, I think. Yeah. Maybe fifteen bucks. the The disc itself is going to cost more, but if yeah. you're just using, if you just have the kiln wash, you can actually get that off with probably the stock thing that comes on it. Yeah, just the cheap sandpaper one. The mm-hmm. discs are probably like five to ten bucks, right? I think so. Yeah, wear your mask. Yes, wear your respirator and do it outside because it's going to make a hell of a mess. There's going to be a bunch of dust everywhere. Mm-hmm. And yeah, angle grinder, pretty quick and easy. It's not actually, I think some of them are two handed where you got like a handle and then you've got the the part where you actually grab it and turn it on. But yeah, quick grind. Um, I will actually put a link to the Sue McLeod kiln wash recipe that I use. Um, It actually has helped because I had, I've had issues where you put the kiln wash on. I've hit historically had kiln wash. You put it on and it shrinks too much and then it just flakes off a bunch. Mm -hmm. And you just hope not to turn those shelves upright because the shit's going to flake everywhere and fall off. Um, She uses some of the calcined EPK, which is just EPK is just clay, right? Egg or plaster or kaolin. It's just clay. And then because it's calcined, which means you just put it through a biskiln and you just take all the moisture out of it. So you could just fire it in a bowl and then just put it through a bisque, take it out, and that becomes calcined. And that's yeah. like a portion of the recipe. 
And I think there's a another name for it. I think G200 is the other name for it if you just buy it already packaged. Yeah. But that helps because it's already shrunken. Shrunk. All the moisture's out of that, and that's a portion of what you put in there, which becomes the kiln wash, and it should shrink less. I mean, how do you apply yours? Do you do like a brush on, or do you roll it on, or how do you do yours? I've never rolled it on, but that sounds like a good idea. Um, I've never done the calcined EPK recipe. I think mine was like half EPK, a half Gersley. No, not Gersley. Like, don't. That was not right. Half EPK and half aluminum, maybe? I'm not sure. Um, don't quote I'm me pulling, on that. I'm pulling mine up. <laughs> I'm not sure. But it, I know that it's a 50-50 mix, and I just water it down. The problem with me is that I feel like I'm a bad example because I don't have glazes that run, and I'm really responsible with my glazing. So um, I do, like... Literally, when I get a kiln shelf, I brush on kiln wash once. And that's it. So, um, I'm not sure following my lead is a great example. <laughs> yeah, the Suma Cloud recipe is... Kiln wash recipe is two scoop aluminum hydrate, which is yeah. just what I use to make sure my underglaze stuff doesn't stick to the shelf, so... Two scoops of that, one scoop EPK, one scoop calcined EPK, which is what I just talked about, and then oh, one okay. scoop silica. Oh, huh. I think that you could probably just, I think that mine's just half EPK and half silica, or half uh, alumina. And it worked great, but like I said, I'm not a good example because I am kind of a picky bitch when it comes to that sort of stuff. And I don't. Because once it starts flaking off and you try to like reapply, it's. You always got thick spots and thin spots. It's best to just like yeah. clean it all off and then reapply. Yeah. Like I've never cleaned a kiln shelf. I've never had to clean a kiln shelf with an angle grinder because I'm that kind of glazer. So. Yeah. Or so, I mean, some people probably get used shelves from the person yeah. that they're kiln from and they look like shit. Yeah. For sure. But I mean, shelves are honestly not that expensive that. If if a shelf was caked in glazed bits and stuff everywhere, that you, even if you grinded it, it wouldn't really be that flat because there's so many yeah divots intricacy. And stuff. Like like you can buy a kiln shelf for like thirty five bucks. Yeah, yeah, I would say like yeah, absolutely. Um, the or reason cheaper. Oh, I mean, I was gonna say that the reason that I use kiln wash, that I even apply kiln wash. It, for the first layer is just so that the like porcelain doesn't stick to the shelves. That's the only yeah. reason. So you're putting like a thin layer. You're not putting like I, three and four coats of. No, uh, I put like four. the thinnest layer possible. The thinnest layer. Okay. Because yeah. you're not having glaze run onto it and then picking up kiln wash. You're just, <laughs> you have the most minimal amount. Okay. Yeah. See, I put like. like even when I had glazes coats, that ran. Three thin coats. Yeah, That's even kind of that, even when I had glazes that ran, it was, like, barely even a little bit. And, like, if I had student pieces, I made them put them on cookies because, like, screw that. I'm not, yeah. uh, you know, so. Yeah, I have, like, a mini paint roller that's, like, six inches wide. That's that a good I idea. Just, I just keep in the bucket. We did that in yeah. college. We had, like, a full-size paint roller, and we would do that with, like, the wood kiln shelves and the yeah. the gas kiln shelves. You just keep a bucket with kiln wash in it and just, like, keep it in there and just mix it up with the, with the roller. Paint roller, yeah. And then just roll it on there, like, nice and thick. And, you know, we yeah. had students using the angle grinder. That's how I learned to use the angle grinder was it in college, where you had to clean mm -hmm. off the wood kiln shelves and shit. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. I think that's a great idea. I've also kiln washed cookies. There you go. Yeah, definitely. I'm sure you could probably just get the kiln wash to a state where you can just dunk the cookie if you're like, like. That is exactly how I did it. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Because painting this, just like, like I don't want to paint glaze on, like just dunk the thing. Yep. Yeah. Mhm. Yeah. All right. There you go. Kiln shelf maintenance. Which reminds um, me, I probably need to apply some new kiln wash on mine. All right. Well, oh, oh, oh! <laughs> I forgot like, the most exciting news. 
What's that? You got my kiln. You did. I saw the picture. Uh, it said one more was coming. I hope that wasn't yours. That was. No, that's not mine. Uh, okay. There's a kiln that's lost. Uh, we don't know where it is. Oh, um, no. Uh, but, uh, yeah, no, they delivered all the kilns to Rebecca's studio. They were supposed to deliver it to mine, but that's okay. And um, they're supposed to deliver all of them to yours? No, they're supposed to one? deliver mine to mine, but just they didn't. The uh, so, anyway, a uh, large box is at Rebecca's, and it won't get moved for a while, but we have it. It is, it is, it is in your possession. It is in the possession of us. That's so. great. Very exciting. I saw the pictures on Chris's, I think, and yeah. Rebecca shared it, and I was like, I bet Becca is ecstatic. But I don't know why you didn't share it on Instagram yet, but maybe I did. you just... Oh, you I did? shared it in a story. Okay, maybe you just reshared his Yeah, I thing just reshared it. Yeah. And then we'll okay. see that photo when it's all set up, and you're ready to go. That'll be nice. Oh, I am so excited. And, like, I just talked to my landlord about the studio space, and he would really love me to stay in the large space, so we're going to see if that'll make it work. Because the space that I'm in, that me and Dusty have been in, Dusty's leaving. Um, the space that me and Dusty have been in um, is $900 a month, so we split it, so it's 450 a month, which I can handle. Um, I don't love it, but I can handle it. And um, But it's literally made for kilns. Like, it has fire stuff, and the fire code and everything is all crazy, and it's got yeah. a space for event. And so he's like, I'd really love it if you stayed there, and he's willing to work with me, like, financially. Um, but So I'm going to try and find somebody that maybe wants to split it with me. Uh, but, yeah. Yeah, fun stuff. Nice. Are you going to move your things closer to the window? Do you like the window space? Uh, or? Yes. Okay. I was so sad, honestly, I was so sad when I like came in and I was like, I don't even get like to be by the window at all. Like we can't split it the other way. <laughs> like, <laughs> the long way. <laughs> uh, can't half like can I half be at the window and him half be at the window? But that's yeah. okay. I'm excited to be by the window. Yeah. It's something simple, but it's like, hey, it's nice to get some sunlight. Yeah. And there's like a nice yeah, I'm excited. Sweet. He was like, well, you have a big ass studio for the rest of the year. So that's exciting. Yeah, that like, thing is that thing is very massive. It's, and that room is perfect for kilns, honestly, because yeah, I remember visiting yeah. and I'm like, they like spray foam this room with. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's yeah. over it's, duty or overhaul. Is, but um, the way duty. RJ, he's like, he goes, I do everything in my power to make it as save as humanly possible because they will fucking find something. <laughs> I bet. <laughs> He's like, I just, I just go above and over, over and over and top or whatever, above, and above and, and beyond, above and beyond to infinity and beyond. Infinity and beyond. Charles. Jeez. Yeah. God. So needy. He's like fucking Lloyd. All right. What are we talking about today? Oh, you do you want to say it or do you want me to? You want to say it? You can say it. Okay, so we thought that it might be fun to revisit our very first episode. We have not listened to it. You haven't listened to it in a long time, right? No, it's been quite a while. Quite a while. I have never listened to it. and <laughs> Never? Uh, <laughs> no, I've never listened to almost <laughs> any of the episodes that we oh have. Oh my gosh. The most you listened was probably editing for the best of, and that's it. <laughs> the only one, <coughs> you know what's funny, is the only one that I've really listened to a lot is the one that we did with Dante and Lindsay, because I was making my bed at the time, and, like, moving oh. things around in my room, and so I was like, ah, eh, I have time. <laughs> oh, that's funny. So, anyway, um... So, it's called Motivation as a Maker, and Ryan's gonna read the short... Yeah. So neither of us have listened. So we thought it'd be fun to um, talk, to about, talk it about it now. Now, like, since we're basically two years since we uh, first recorded or first released it. Yeah. And this is our first episode after the last episode we released, which was uh, two years of Wheel Talk. So it'd be kind of fun to like see yeah. what we talk about, see what's different, see what's the same, and. It should release literally on the date two years later. I think it'll be one day earlier, but you get the idea. 
Yeah, you're right. It'll be on the 21st, not the 22nd. That's but yeah, right. so that's what that's what we thought we would talk about. Okay, read what we wrote. All right, motivation is a maker. This is our highest listened episode as well. Yeah, we've had the most. I guess people listen to it chronologically. They just get in there and start listening. Um, on this episode, Ryan and Becca discuss motivation as a maker. Becca speaks on her perspective as a full-time potter and studio owner, and Ryan as a part-time maker while he works a typical nine-to-five during the day. Each maker, artist, craftsperson, small business owner gets motivated by different things, and we share some of our experiences related to overcommitting, list-making, goal-setting, selling at shows, and why you should focus your time on what you love doing. Thanks for joining us on our first episode, and we would love to hear your feedback to help us improve. Ooh, fun. All right. So where do we start? I've actually got chapter. If you look back as far as the first episode, like I was putting markers in here with chapters of what we talked about. God, can you imagine doing that now? No, it's too much work. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, let's talk about like, what is your, let's talk about what our general motivation level is. Like how motivated are you as a human being? If I have the right reward system, I would say, okay, and then I, I'm pretty motivated. If it's, um, I don't know, it depends on the task. Like, it, if it's something that's going to put me in like a pause, man, four, four times. times. Okay, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I think it has to, um, it has to either like feel good to do it, like am I helping somebody out or am I doing it because like it's going to be good for me in the long term? I mean, this probably sounds like a, it's very methodical, but it's just like, hey, am I going to be happy doing this or am I not? Right. Is it moving me in a positive direction, especially now? I have so many balls in the air that I have to focus and deprioritize things that aren't important and like be able to vocalize that. And say like, hey, this is what I'm focusing on, and this is what I want to spend my time doing. I feel like yeah. I'm very good at breaking down like time estimates and like how much time is this actually going to take me? What is going to come up come up along the way that is unknown that could set me back longer? And if there's too many unknowns, then I I'm very uh, willing to just like not do it if I'm like, uh, yeah. oh, I don't really need to do that right now. Um, but I would say I'm generally pretty motivated to get a lot done. Like, and I feel guilty if I'm not doing something that's productive. <laughs> Do you think that your motivation has like gone up or down in the last couple of years? Toward like toward specifically towards clay. I think it's gone up because I see the potential for, I think I see the demand there mm -hmm. where I know that I can, when I'm confident, when I, put my time and efforts to making certain forms or I'm confident it can sell. So I'm more motivated because I like the sell and I like the continuation of the making, enjoying yeah. the making and then the getting it to the end goal and like delivering a wholesale order or getting a sale that is at a show and like making sure I have enough stock so that I can put myself in a good position to sell a lot of shit. Yeah. And then I come back home and I do it all over again and I try to plan out my <clears throat> my time appropriately. Yeah. Well, and that also I would imagine the goal of becoming full time for you. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And I have to have the data to back that up. I'm not a I'm not a a whim person that does things without foresight and a lot of planning and having data to back up what I'm going to do and yeah. You know, I want to have that backlog and that or that that past of being able to be confident in what I'm doing and having the sales to back it up that I can do it and not just have like, OK, I'm set for the next, you know, three months. I have um, I have like ten thousand dollars in my ceramics account that will help get me through this period of time. I don't know how long it's going to last, but like that's what I got. I'm yeah, I'm not going to I'm not going to do that. You're not going to leave it up to chance. Yes. I'm not, I'm not like a, I'll figure it out. He's not I like got, Becca. 
I got some tools in my kit that I can say if I need to figure something out, I can do some yeah. things to make some money because I feel like I'm good at making money. Yeah. But I'm not going to do it with a lot of unknowns. Yeah, I agree. You agree that that's how I am? Is that what yeah. you're saying? That yeah. is exactly how you are. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah what about you motivation wise i'm sure it's shifted it has shifted um i feel like uh what was the first question i asked like how do you what is your motivation like um how motivated are you as a person oh, i don't yeah, know okay. if that was framed at just in general or if that was specifically to clay and that i feel like probably part, in but... general um in general i feel like i'm motivated towards uh i am motivated when there are other people involved so if there's a third if there's a second party regardless i will probably be motivated like it's interesting the uh especially now uh looking at how i work when i'm on hourly versus how i work when i am uh paid by the piece i work so much more efficiently and aggressively when I'm paid hourly as opposed to being paid by the piece. Even though I make significantly less when I'm paid hourly. Um, hmm. Because I so feel... So you're getting less for your money. I'm getting less for my money, but I feel a responsibility to Rebecca to make her money worth it. I gotcha. So there's, like, I love Tuesdays. Like, it's it feels like nothing to me to go in and just to work, you know, hourly and to trim. Um, is that Tuesdays are the day that I go in and trim for an hourly rate. And then every other day I, pay, I do piece rate. But um, when it's just me, I'm like, eh, I have time. I don't have a life. Where am I going to go? Like, <laughs> where am I going to go? Do you feel like be... you're generally more, um, your, the, the work that you put in for Rebecca is, she's getting more bang for her buck when you do tasks versus some other people? Oh, versus other people? Maybe. Maybe. Mostly because I'm so well versed in all, most of the tasks. Hi, Marvel. Um, I'm... I'm really well versed in the like, you know, trimming. Like there was no training time. There was no like nobody has to tell me how to do something. You yeah. know? So that's the only advantage I would say. I would say that Allie is ten out of ten better than me trimming. Um because she that's literally what she does every single day. And if yeah. she is motivated, she knocks it out of the park, you know. Um I am just as fast as her on a good day but yeah definitely uh so but personally motivation wise i have very little now so on like one to ten i'm at like a four four. so on a daily basis (laughs) on a daily basis does it fluctuate throughout the week it definitely i feel like it definitely fluctuates but like it's like i've had um fucking dishes sitting in my sink for like three days and finally today i came in and i was like okay i've got to fucking do this like, it's driving me crazy, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, so, but I find that if I keep my tasks at, like, a level nine, then I don't have to have a ton of motivation to get them finished, you know? Like, mm-hmm. if I keep my apartment generally clean, then I don't have to clean it <laughs> right. as much, you know? So that's kind of how I approach that. But, yeah, my motivation is uh, pretty much shot. Um, as far as clay right now, my motivation um, with Clay and in the past two years. Like, previously, I think that my motivation was so high. It wasn't even that I was motivated. I wasn't. You would probably agree with that, huh? Like... You weren't motivated? You were... I mean, were I was, you were you just, like, staying afloat kind of thing? Like, you were just keeping up with... Yeah. ...the tasks that you needed to do? Yeah. But I you think weren't that, pushing any one yeah. thing or any specific... I probably was motivated in 2014 and then once like every year since that I've gotten like a little less. But like you remember like do you remember how many times you've been like hey do you want to do a live video because you knew that I was doing jack shit. You know? <laughs> well, and, I mean, like, you kind of appreciated the little push as well. 
I do. And yeah, I definitely need, like, like I said, I need a second person. I need another person. And that's why I put things on Instagram saying like, this is my list for the day. And, um, you know, like I, I have to have accountability buddy. And if I don't, then I'm just like, well, uh, and you know, when you have to, Larry Bruning always said, when you have to pay your rent, you start paying, you start making pots, you know, when there's something, if you have kids and you have to put food on the table, you're going to figure out how to make money. When you need you know? money, find money. When you Is need that... money, find money. <laughs> <laughs> and so, yeah, I think that that's kind of like my general thought towards it. But I feel like, though, I feel however, now that I've been all this like negative person, I feel that it's growing. You know, I've, um, you know, I moved here. My motivation went to absolute zero. And then... Um, I'm like slowly climbing up. I do feel I also have to have a goal like you, you know, um, like I kind of want to do this. I kind of a distant goal or a medium range goal or medium range is fine or even a short range goal. Like I kind of want to ride this shitty pots situation out and see like how it goes, even though Ryan hates the word. Um, (laughs) I'm gonna make I it, it. I feel like you're downplaying it, but I'm gonna because customers it. don't understand shitty. They're like, "What do you mean shitty?" I don't know. I'm gonna make it you a go brand. For it. Okay, I'm gonna do make it. it a brand, and it's gonna be about comedy. It's it's a it's fucking funny, Ryan. It is funny. I'm <laughs> just saying, customer. Some customers <laughs> won't get it, but maybe they're not your customers. I just think you're That's walling okay. yourself off to certain That's customers okay. that could be making you money because they see shitty cups and they don't understand it. They don't understand. That's okay. <laughs> anyway, moving on. <laughs> um, but with this whole, like, that idea, I'm like, oh, maybe, like, having some idea of, like, if I want to sell in the future or, like, becoming a millionaire by the time that I'm 40 or now I've changed it to 45. And, um, <laughs> but, like, that gives me, like, motivation to, to kind of, like, get things done. So, because I need to make three thousand dollars every month if I want to be a millionaire by the time I'm forty-five. You need to make that and like that's invest on it. top of invest that much. Okay. I need to invest three thousand dollars a month if I'm going to be a millionaire by the time I'm forty-five, just through stocks. Wow. It's a lot, isn't it? That is a lot. Yeah. I'll figure some way out too. I'll yeah. I'll figure out some loophole. So is your uh you're kind of talking about steady four. Is it like what is it when you're in Rebecca's studio and you're working for your day job? And then what is it in your own studio when you're working on your own stuff? Does that is it different there? Mm, in my own studio it's like a two. And then in Rebecca's studio it's like a six. So we're okay. averaging out. Yeah. Well, I think that having the kiln at your own studio should start creeping that. I also up. I agree that like I have I definitely like mentally shut it off just because I knew I didn't have a kiln. I mean, I'm sure that happened with like COVID. People just canceled a bunch of shows. They couldn't do their shows, so their motivation just plummeted because they're like, "What am I doing this for?" Yeah. Oh, I have a question. Okay, so I saw today. I don't know who it was. It was just a passing thing, and it was somebody who was making a piece a day to gain back their motivation. And I initially was like, that ain't going to do it. (laughs) Like to me, just make a piece for themselves. Is that what they meant? Or Or just like make a one piece of pottery a day. day. Yeah. Just until they get their motivation back. And to me, that seems like it would have the, the like opposite reaction. What do you think about you? Like, I feel like that would make it seem like I got homework every day. Yeah. But if it, but I think it's, I think it has good intentions that it's trying to get you in the studio Ooh, every day, which sparks motivation yeah, and sparks a, a direction and a, a North star a little bit of maybe your North star is to just get into the studio. Yeah. I think that's, that's where you, you got to start somewhere. So that's what I think yeah. the intention of one a day is. It's not, it's not like. All right, I got a task. I got a reminder every single day on my calendar that says get into the studio and make one pot. And it feels like homework. But, yeah. 
That's what I think. Yeah, that is. that's true. I could see that. Oh, I also think that um, for uh, for me, uh, the space that I work in has to be right. I'm. I feel, and I, I. I would imagine for you too. I feel very lucky that I found this studio in Indianapolis, or Dusty found it. I didn't even find it. Um, and there's so many artists, and they like, you know, when you walk in, they're sitting outside and they're smoking and they're talking, and like we have talks about dreams and art and business and stuff, and like that really helps, you know. Helps you get get going and feeling like okay, yeah. I'm going into the studio with some curiosity and Creativity something to get me going. And, yeah, like I think I definitely think that the community that you have is a driving force within motivation, whether that be Instagram or not. Like you have a ton of people in your Instagram community. Yeah, yeah. And, I think seeing other people on Instagram probably helps a little bit with motivation. I mean, I do see it a little bit as distraction like i can spend less time looking at some of that because i i find myself grabbing it grabbing my phone like it's uh can't remember what it's your little drug you know Mm -hmm. just go you just kind of grab for it when you got when you got a few seconds and you're like you know i don't know i don't know what and then you just grab for it you know we should have like a blackout week a blackout week blackout week. a whole week a whole week of no instagram you That'd know what? I would I would feel like those people that say, I'm so sorry that I've been silent here. <laughs> We're I'm like really slacking on my Instagram these days. And I'm like, nobody fucking noticed. Nobody cares. But it is good personally to do that, you know? Yeah. Just to like have a, a cleanse or a fast, I suppose. Um, what was I going to say? Oh, it's like how people are always like, it's been a while since I've introduced myself. <laughs> Allow me to introduce myself. I don't know. That's like, that... remember that one post that I did? I was like, it's been a while since I've introduced myself. I'm just kidding. I'm not fucking doing that. <laughs> I said, fuck that. Yeah. Fuck that. <laughs> I was trying to think of a post to do that says, I will never. And then finish it out with a bunch of shit that people do commonly like that. With like, yeah. it's been a while since I've introduced myself. Sorry, I've been slacking on my Instagram, whatever, whatever. Like a number of things that people do. Doing a giveaway Give every time you hit a milestone. Yeah. Give me your opinion on this. This or this. I mean, I do this or that sometimes do. to spark some engagement. I, mean, we all do. I think it's fun to just have a yes. couple pieces. Plus you get a lot of like... It's pretty yeah. even a lot of times, but what else is another things. one? Oh man, I made a list on my phone. Oh man, we're getting off topic, but I feel like this is fun. This is a fun <laughs> off topic. Oh, I will never uh, post heavily filtered or edited posts. Oh yes, I don't do that. Um, yeah, the new faces around me. L- let me introduce myself. Um. <laughs> Those uh, meet the maker or 30 plates in 30 days. Like, I'm never oh, fucking doing that. fuck that shit. I'm never going to do that personally. Not against anybody that does those. No, Not against anybody that does these things. It's just things that I see commonly yeah. done. I know it's probably just a sense of, like, doing it to get, get in the studio and kind of like what we talked about. But, yeah, yeah I'm not going to do no, that. No, I think the 30 plates in 30 days, if you can do it, you should. I couldn't do it. I, like, fuck that. I can't do that. But that, that, yeah, that's, I'm like, not going to do that. Much. That's way too much dedication. <laughs> um, doing stories and then covering it up with like a a sticker or something so a you can't see the so meat of it. I'm like, fuck that. Nobody is tapping that. <laughs> I'm not going to tap that. I know what you're fucking doing. I'm not tapping it. I'm not tapping it. Like, um, oh, click on my post to see this new house. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. It's like, come on. I know what you're fucking doing. Uh, a lot in this episode and i really love it um, he's gonna reposting stuff that i'm not genuinely interested in um yeah that would be like if somebody asked me to repost something like i'm not really gonna do that unless i'm actually interested in it i'm never gonna edit long form videos down i'm not gonna cut up and splice and edit no nope um reposting personal tiktok videos as instagram posts or reels i'm not gonna do that I don't even use TikTok. I'll do that. What? 
No thanks. Reposting videos? Yeah. Um, and I generally don't speak in absolutes, so that's another thing. That's not really things a lot of people say, but I mean, some you could say some. Well, people you saying I'm never going to is an absolute. So I that's know that's why I said in parentheses. Although this post seems like a contradiction, doesn't it? I will almost. I said almost never. Almost so. never. So that that's pretty much the gist of it, but. Yeah, I don't know. I feel like if I posted that, it would piss some people off and they would get defensive and some people don't well, get fuck them. But whatever. I do what I want. All right, so back to motivation. Um, do you have any issues with overcommitting or figuring out um, what you're willing to commit to, whether it's customer-wise or work-wise or just you know what's in your wheelhouse and what's not oh remind me that we should talk about motivation with commissions because that's like a thing oh, um yeah. <laughs> uh no i don't think i have an issue with overcommitment. i haven't i haven't like there's a few times that i've had to be like you know what i can't do this and that's just because i said yes because i was being nice and i didn't want to do it yeah. But. yeah, I feel like you're a very comf- you're very comfortable with saying, you know what, I just can't do that. Or yeah, I am. You're you're saying like no to a point, but you're. It seems like you are very quick to say no if you really feel in your gut that you don't want to do it. Yeah. Or that you're on the fence about it. You're like, well, maybe I could do that, but I don't. Th- I don't see you saying that. No. Yeah, uh, somebody told me a long, long time ago, saying no once a day keeps the psychiatrist away. So <laughs> That's a good way to keep your plate manageable, too. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think uh, I'm, I'm definitely a person to say, you know what, I let me make some samples or, you know, I'll say something yeah. like that. Um, so, I mean, there was just one situation through through Etsy or something that we were talking about on our trip about like, Hey, this thing came through and I was thinking about it and I ended up saying like, what would be involved in making this new thing that is basically a combination of shot glasses that I make to make like a measuring, it's actually called a jigger, which I didn't know that was what it was called. Yeah. And me and Ryan were like, Oh, we thought it, what did you think it was? Well, there's a thing in, in mold, like mold things and ceramics that I think a jigger is where you like, you have oh, the thing on the jigger, arm. But it's a, is a it a jig? jigger or a jigger? I thought it was a jigger. No, like that's a jigger. Yeah. When you yeah. do the pots, that's a jigger. Is the thing that you were talking the about. Measuring like, is, co- it's the same thing. It's called it's the same called thing. It's called a jigger. Yeah. Cause we're all like, okay, me, Ryan and Rachel are all sitting in our, like they have one bed. I have one bed and we're like talking before we go to sleep. And Ryan's like, they want me to make a jigger, and and me and Ryan are like, what the fuck? And and Rachel's well, like, like, that wouldn't be too hard. And we're like, what are you talking about? <laughs> we're in the we're in the ceramics world of like what a jigger is, and I'm like, I'm not like a studio that makes molds and shit. Like, what do you expect me to make? But they're talking about the. It's basically like a measuring thing that a bartender would use with the the cone on the top that's for like half an ounce, and then the cone half on the bottom for like one ounce or two ounce or whatever so that's what they want and i'm kind of on the fence about like with becca what do i charge should i commit to like saying i'll make some samples or you know what should i do and she's kind of like say fuck it like i'm not going to do that and i was kind of (laughs) like eh, what's involved like how could i do it that's feasible that would not kill me so i ended up saying i would make some samples and get back to them and i think a lot of that is just figuring out what kind of personality you're dealing with yeah are they going to be open to what you're making or are they going to be nitpicky or, you know, are they going to be somebody good to work with that you're going to regret doing it at the end or you're going to be like, okay, that wasn't too bad. Yeah. Oh my God. A customer can fucking kill your motivation to do anything. Yeah. So, I mean, there, and there's some of those looming in the back of my head of, you know, I kind of mentioned I was going to make samples of something and it was going to be within a couple weeks and I never did it and I never contacted them back for like four months. And it's still in the back of my mind that I should at least say something to them and say, <laughs> you know what? I know I said I was going to do this, but I couldn't do it. 
I can't commit to doing that. It's not going to be worth it for me. I'm sorry. Do you know why I say no so many times? Is because like my neighbor back in like 2014 was like, will you make me a bowl? And it took me a year and a half to make it for her. And like, I think after that experience, I was like, you know what? I'm not going to say yes, because I won't do it. Like, what you know, got you to I'll... eventually do it? Was it reminding from the, did they remind you or did they ask you or like, how, how did you finally do it? Or why did you do it? I don't even know. I don't even know what got me to do it. I think that I was like, ah, fuck, I got to do that. And what's so frustrating is that like, especially when you have like custom orders and stuff, it's like, can you make me four plates? I'm like, okay, four plates makes, takes me 10 minutes to make, but it's going to take me 15 years to get to making them in 10 minutes. Like, it's like I will wait four months before I sit down and say, OK, I'm going to make these. And it's so fucking easy once you do it. <laughs> and you're just like, God it's because it's so it. It, it's so small in the gamut of all the things that you're doing. Yeah. And it's like I would much rather throw 20 mugs than to make two plates for somebody for a custom order. Because it's yeah. like, ugh. do you know what I do in the wintertime? Or I used to do in the winter time. I probably do it this winter too. Is that on my? Uh, actually, I use a yellow notepad, <laughs> like one of those yellow old school flip over the top notepads. Yeah. And I write down every every custom order, everything that I need to do, every wholesale order, everything in months that I have to get them done in. So like, um, do you January have commitments or- that in far in advance that you can do that? Yes, I used to. Yeah. Or is it just based on historically, like you can expect that you're going to get a wholesale order from no. this company in March, June and August or something? No, like, that. like so here's the thing. OK, here's a few things about wholesale orders that I feel are necessary for everybody to know. And it's completely 150 percent OK for you to do this as a maker. When somebody says, can I have this? You say, what date would you like it by? And then you follow that up with, I need an actual date. I need you need to tell me a date that you want this by and you write it down. And that's the date you need it by, because after so many times where everybody says, take your time, it's fine. Oh, take your time. Take your fucking uh, time. Oh, is, take your time. Take Give me a date. Take your time is like, okay, so you never, you never want it. Okay, cool. <laughs> like, I'm not going to make it. It's great. I mean, <laughs> literally in the scheme of what we do in like a year's time, uh, like, I don't know. It just falls so down, down on the priority list that yeah. it never gets high enough to be a focus in my mind. So, like, come come September, I start getting these orders for Christmas and stuff like that, right? So, I start writing it. I go September, October, November, December. And and they're reaching out to you. You're not getting ahead of the game and saying, hey, just so you know, it's going to be a busy fucking time. Let me know what you yeah, need I mean, and like what day you need Some wholesale orders I do, but yes, potentially. And then, you know, if they order the wholesale order in, in September, then it's due in October. October and then if you know and so I'll write everything that's due in that in that uh, month and I'll do those first like that's the priority you know like this is what needs to be done and I write every single fucking thing down on this list and I literally go through and cross them off and like just start at day one you know and just cross them off and move down the list and it's so satisfying but it, it does help a lot because then you have it physically in front of you you it's tactile so you can literally cross it off um and then once i start crossing weird random things off that happen to get done i'll make a new list reformulate it and do all the like dates that Mm -hmm. it needs to be done in and then just keep continuing to do that and then just flip through i think that's a great task to just as a basic level to i agree at least list out your commissions that you've done because i started doing that this year in my um, budgeting my income sheet and all that stuff i actually started a line item as like it's not a commission it's not a consignment or a wholesale or a retail it's a commission yeah so that i can look back at my year and see like what task did i do for commissions and then i can review it and say were these worth it or which ones were worth it which ones weren't and hopefully that's going to get me a little bit more comfortable with 
you know, what did I make for this? And like, yeah, you know, what should be in my wheelhouse of comfortability and what shouldn't? Because yeah. I can only spend my time doing certain things and yeah. I'm going to be more comfortable saying no because I know that I can make money elsewhere. Yeah. And be confident about it. I also add, um, sometimes I add checklists on the left side to three checks, three um, columns of checks, checklists um, thrown, bisque, glazed. So um, that way I know kind of like where I'm at. But sometimes I also just kind of like put them in and then I move them down. Um, yeah. The list. It's, yeah, I mean, you could really, probably use like a Trello board or something like that if you wanted something digital or you wanted something. Yeah, yeah you know, Trello is great. Like Trello, create I, items with yeah. the commission name and you can move them across the columns closer to yeah. complete. Yeah, Trello is great for that stuff. I personally just like to write it down. Mm -hmm. I, I like to write it down. So, and I'll, yeah, even, I, I'll do it on the iPad, but it's not as, yeah, honestly, it's just not as good. Yeah, writing stuff down and crossing things off is is definitely where it's at for me too, for the most yeah. part. Yeah, I try to find myself saying, I'm in the four to six week range normally, so if it's a commission, I'll say four to six weeks. And if it's right in the middle of summertime and all that, like I'm comfortable saying it's going to be five to seven weeks. I just shift that yeah. back a week and say I'm going to get it to you by these dates. And then when I write it, I actually write mine on a whiteboard. Yeah. It's in my studio and I can erase them as I get them. And the, the whiteboard shrinks a little bit as we deliver some things. And then I inevitably get another random wholesale order. Lately, it's been a lot of, I've actually done more like wholesale or just like bulk shot glass yeah. orders in this last year. A lot of them are coming from Etsy. Like people reach out, you know, one of them was for like bridal shower gifts for a wedding or something like that. One of them was that I'm working on now is for a church that wants them for like individual communion kind of sippers you know one of them is for a an actual shop that has wholesale Jeez, you know something or another. for jeezy that's like super fancy for jesus well it's for their like yeah it's for their they're they're doing individual servings because of covid they're not drinking out of a single chalice anymore we always did that you can get those little tiny clear well, plastic yeah it depends cups. on the yeah they just don't want the clear yeah. plastic ones they want like nice ones they want to be fancy did you hear that i mixed up the words i think i'm dyslexic in my speaking Fancy cups? I said, I said, Jeezy for Francis. I thought you said, said fancy for Jesus. I said Jeezy. Oh, <laughs> Jeezy. <fancy>. Young Jeezy. <laughs> <laughs> Got a soul survivor over here. Uh, All right. Um, anyway, moving that's on. a deep cut. All right. <laughs> 2000s hip hop deep cut. Um <laughs> Um, and then there's another one for like somebody that sells um, ciders, like apple cider or something like they call it fire cider. It's like a, a health thing. You take it in the morning, like drinking an apple cider vinegar, I think. And um, yeah, so it's a lot of like wholesale orders that I just got to get on my list and then put the dates of when they're due and then just slowly work through them. And I'm getting more comfortable like putting things on the back burner or just not committing to individual um, wholesale or con uh, commissions that are like, can you make me this one piece or these two things that are just random that I physically could make, but do I want to make them and do I have the time to make them in a reasonable fashion? Like, eh, I don't really want to do experimentation, honestly. So right. some things like, like this one woman asked for like a soup bowl which is just my cereal bowl. She's like, I really like the cereal bowl, but can you put a handle on it? And I was like, yeah, I could do something like that. Here's the price. Mm -hmm. And what was weird is you price that out, right? A cereal bowl is $24. And I'm like, you put a handle on it. This goes back to the whole pricing a bowl versus a mug thing. Because you use a pound and a half of clay and you put a handle on it. What is a reasonable price that you would put for a bowl with a handle on it that you think? It's $24 retail. Hmm. 40. Okay, I priced it 32 <laughs> because I was just putting a handle on it. But uh but it's like a mug costs 32. So like what would legitimately make sense for me to price it at 40 when it's a bowl that's $24 with a handle on it. So I was like Right. Yeah. So it's like I sell a mug that is a pound and a hand and a handle for 32. 
but this is a bowl that's a pound and a half and a handle, so it's way bigger. And it's like, why is it the same price? But that's weird. All right. Uh, I think that that's probably a lot of overcommitting stuff. Uh, what about list making? We talked about list making a little bit. Um, anything else about goal setting? How do you how are you setting your goals now? I don't you have, have any. A, you don't have any. I mean, you're <laughs> getting your kiln was probably a big goal, but you didn't really have control yeah. of that. So. Yeah, I feel like I'll now start setting like goals and lists and start doing that stuff. You know, I really would like to get a schedule where I like now that I'm, you know, I'm going to start making more cups and stuff in my own studio. I would like to get to a point where it's like I'm there on Saturdays and I'm there on Sunday afternoons and I'm there on, you know, uh, during the week, I'm there right after work and like being committed to being like, I'm going to be out of work at six o'clock, you know, and go over to the other studio. So I'd like to get to a point where I'm more consistent with my scheduling, which mm-hmm. would be nice. Does that help but, get you? Uh, because I'm guessing you're one that you need to go right to the studio and not go home first, because if you went home first, you would not leave. I would never so is like Never food a motivating factor of like okay you last ate at one o'clock so if you get to the studio and then you got to be at your studio for a couple hours so that you can eat dinner at a reasonable time is yeah. like that, that part of it too so like i well not really i mean like the problem with me is that i'll go to work and then i if I go, oh, man, I was trying to hide that one and I couldn't. Um, if I go, <laughs> by the way, all of those people that are like, she yawns too much. It's fucking 11 o'clock, okay? It is 11 p.m. and I've worked eight hours today. And I've made 100 pots. And shut up. Anyway. <laughs> um, <laughs> so defensive. I am. I am defensive. <laughs> um, so... <laughs> I am like hungry by that time and I don't plan ahead. So I need to definitely start planning ahead because I always like just stop by Taco Bell or like. Yeah. Kind of like pack a, pack a second lunch or a snack a dinner. or something. Yeah. Or... Cause unlike you, I eat dinner at a reasonable time. Yeah. You eat dinner at nine o'clock. I usually or eat it at 11 seven. PM or yeah. midnight or. Yeah. So, but. yeah, but I don't know. I mean, it's it's fucking tough, man. I feel like motivation, obviously, is so mental. And, like, if you're not in the right space mentally, if you have depression, if you have anxiety, if you have ADHD, like, mental, your mental capacity has so much to do with whether you want to do something or not. Like, I've had moments where I'm like, I have so much to do. And I can't move. Overwhelmed of. Yeah. Yeah. I. I, Do you ever. I I get that sometimes after like shows or something. Or Mm -hmm. like after vacation. I kind of got that. When we got back home. And I was like. Okay. I had the show. The show was fine. Like the show was just. I was just coasting. You know. I knew what I needed to do. Pack the. Pack the car up. Go to the show. Sell. Whatever. And then when I hit Sunday and Monday. I was like shit i got a bunch of stuff to do like i got these shot glass wholesales i need to get done and then i'm like but a lot of them are greenware so i gotta like bisque fire but what do i do in the meantime until i can fill up the kiln so i'm like like should i be throwing something specific should i be glazing (laughs) like what should i be doing right now um i feel overwhelmed but it's like i don't know what to do so yeah i had a little bit of that but i think getting in the studio is a first step for sure got to get in the studio and do something yeah Um, does the um i was gonna there's something i was gonna ask about the like is the um do you get with the related to like goal setting are you once i'm to this part of the year like i feel like i lose sight of like what my goals were for the year because i'm just so in the day-to-day of like you got to keep up yeah and like just focus on the week that you don't really know that you're getting off track or that things are distracting you or 
It just like moves by so quickly. Yeah. I feel like the weeks fly by now. You know what's funny is that last was it last year or two years ago when Boldly podcast started with Heidi? I remember listening right around August time. Yeah. And her saying, Guys, it's August. Start working on Christmas. Like <laughs> on the podcast, she's like, Start working on Christmas, guys. And so now I'm telling you right now, because I thought of it, I was like, Start please start working on Christmas. You know, I know it's August, but that's eight out of twelve. Yeah. We're in the last Just think we're of in like, the last quarter. Think of like what you sold the most of. Yeah. In Christmas time and start making those things. Yeah. Or keep making those things so that you have enough stock. I'm like, okay, I got shows this weekend and I got some into October and I'm like, all right, I got to make for those shows. And then by the time October hits, I'm going to be like, all right, start thinking about Christmas. (laughs) You know what I think? I think that I really want to do shows next year. I do. I do think that I really want to do shows. Is Um, that going to help with your motivation? Because you I do. have a deadline. Yeah, I do think that it will. And and I think it'll be fun. I'll do, I'll, we can apply to some of the same shows and like, yeah, I'll sell shitty cups and you sell your stuff and then you'll do better than me and that'll be fine. And, um, but like, I think that that's like a cool, fun goal, you know, it'd be like, okay, I've been here a year, almost eight months now I've been here and time to like, the break's over, you know, like get your shit together, get a kick ass booth, like shelves ceiling the floor. Yeah. And I mean, I think I think you would excel in that atmosphere because yeah, like I know you said you don't like selling online, but like you don't sell your stuff online. Like your personality has to come out for yeah. people to like get why they want to get your stuff. Yeah. As well as just like feeling the pieces and stuff like that. Like it's very tactile for your your new stuff and just some of your, you know, shitty cups or whatever. Like the price tag is going to draw them in and yeah, things like that. So like that's going to sell. So I feel like the yeah. in-person shows are going to do do good for you. Yeah. I always feel like there's something that like every quarter there's something that like gets you going. It's like, OK, Christmas is this quarter. The next quarter, it's like you got to get ready for shows because they start in April. And then during yeah. show season, you're still working that whole time. So you have to, like, keep it up. And if you don't keep it up, you're fucked. So that's, like, the motivation. That's not even motivation. That's just, like, fuck. I don't even know what it's called. It's just, yeah. like, January, it's just like, you're just January trying to keep January through afloat. April is, like, all right, we need to restock some shit because we're going to have to start selling a bunch yeah, that's your motivation time. Everything else after that is just like trying not to drown. Like yeah. really. Like stay afloat. Yeah. Like right now in Graves Code, this is actually our not busy time. You know? We of actually getting things out the door or like the things the number of pieces you're making? Uh like the number of pieces and like th- how much is selling, like r- uh, you know, uh like I guess uh, June, July, and uh, August are, like, the slow months, you know? And then every other month it's like, fuck! Like, mm-hmm. <laughs> you know? But it's, yeah, it's totally opposite from show season. I think it helps that some of the people you interface with, whether it's wholesale or whatnot, like, some of them personality-wise are planners, and they're thinking ahead to Christmas time, and they're like, yeah, okay, what do I want in the shop? So they're reaching out in august and yeah saying like hey i want this and uh they're thinking ahead and then you got people that are procrastinators a little bit or they they realize they're running out and they need to restock so i mean i'm kind of in that a little bit with like consignment too i have to stay on top of it of like thinking ahead and that's why i keep inventory of everything i've delivered and when stuff sells and i get a list of what's sold i can log it and then look at that list and see, like, all right, historically, what has sold? Yeah. And what are they out of? So that I'm not thrown off guard when they say, we need more stuff. I don't want them to have to come to me and say, we need more stuff. Yeah. I want to be ahead of the game and be like, all right, I'm already planning to set them things aside as we go. So that I can deliver some quality pieces to them. Yeah. And I'm not making them wait on me. Sometimes um, I wish that you weren't such an exemplary, like 
example. <laughs> what do you mean? Between the two just, of us? N- no, <laughs> not between us. I mean, I know you're better th- at this part than I am, but like sometimes I'm like, I th- when you talk about things, and I'm like, how does he already like? How does he know that? Like you, you do all the things that you should do, which is good. I guess I that's why we do a podcast. <laughs> I wonder if it's because I I just have to adjust and make it fit within my day to day because Maybe. I know that I. I'm dedicated eight hours a day to be working and I know that I'm going to sleep eight hours of that day. So I have, I don't even know yeah. if that's the math, 16 hours. Is that what's left? No, eight hours left. You have eight hours yeah. left of the day to do what is what you want. And you're probably going to eat some of that time. You're going to shower some of that time, whatever. Like you don't really have that much time in a day that's extra. So you have like six hours to do what you need to do. Yeah. Outside of your job and sleeping and all those things that you have to do. So, you know, that's, that brings up a very good point as a uh, motivation full-time versus motivation part-time, you know, and like how it's different. Is that because you're is. like, I have the entire day to get yeah. X number of things done. So I really have 16 hours to get this stuff done. Yeah. Like I, I think some things historically, if somebody says this thing is due on Friday, you're going to figure out a way to make it get done and you're going to get it done by about Thursday, Thursday afternoon. You'll get it close to Friday. Like you'll figure yeah. out a way to span it to Friday. But if they right. said we need it Wednesday, you'll figure out a way to get it done by Wednesday. Totally. I'm a procrastinator of the mostest. I can. That's why I'm... you're like, give me a date. Yeah, no, seriously. That's why I have to tell people to give me a date because I won't start it until two weeks before. Especially if it's like if it's a big order, I don't start that shit before two weeks before my turnaround time is a month like it used to be a month. And uh, I can't tell you anything that I started the month before it was due. Nothing. Everything was started two weeks before. Yeah. And I think the stress for me comes when I can't control things. So I plan ahead and, you know, I'm like, all right, let me know. Christmas is coming up. Let me know ahead what you're going to need. Um, put this in your ear early. I know it's August, but let me know because I'm going to be busy. I know I'm going to be busy. I don't know why this year would be any different than years past. And just yeah. how you say, like, we'll get back to normal here. I'll, you know, I'll be I'll have plenty of free time when we get back to normal. But like that never comes. That's like a carrot out there that you keep going for. <laughs> that's like. Why do you think it's going to be any different That's two weeks the from now? Cake. Why are you going to be so <laughs> less busy two weeks from now than you are right now? You're going to be right. in the same situation. So um, when I get thrown curveballs and I'm like, hey, can you help me do this thing that's random? And I'm yeah. like, Ugh, it's going to affect my schedule. That's why I kind of um, aggravate Rachel sometimes where she's like, can you do this thing for me or can can you help with this? Usually I'm like. Uh, it's going to affect my schedule, but I mean, I can do it. I'm not going to like doing it, but so I think that's where it stresses me out where it's like, you've got a finite amount of time and you've got to fit that into your schedule this week somehow. And something else is going to be sacrificed. Yeah. So maybe that's part of what motivates me to like keep things moving so that I don't pile up something that I, that I'm like, okay, I need it done in six weeks. So let me just start it here in a couple weeks. Like, I'd be curious to see. I'm. I'm actually. I've always thought this. I'm curious to see when you become full time, what that'll look like. If it'll. If you'll relax a bit, or if you'll be like extra, extra. Like, <laughs> will uh, I just take more on my plate and say like, all right, you got this number of hours, <laughs> yeah. so let's do it to the max. Yeah. Or will you wake up at twelve and like saunter down to the studio and like? I'll probably you know, wake up at like ten at least for sure. For sure. See, 10, that's 10, where 30. it starts. That's where it fucking starts. And then you're like, ooh, lunchtime, yawn. And then at like one o'clock, you're like, oh, an hour lunch is fine. And then you're like, mm, I think I can watch a Netflix show. No, so like, I don't, I wouldn't maybe do that. 10 minutes. And then you sit on your couch and then you don't get up for like four hours. Four and hours. Like, Fuck. And then you actually still have a part time pottery gig and no time. Like you just do nothing during the day. It's like absolutely nothing. 
I'm it's someone like, that is like, okay, I want to limit myself. I want to discipline myself. I'm going to choose a 30 minute episode because that is an end point for me. Yeah. I'm not going to do this next episode bullshit. I'm not going to let it autoplay. I'm going to be disciplined enough to be like, all right, I can eat my lunch in 30 minutes and call it a day. Yeah. Or I can listen to this podcast that's based on an hour and it's yeah. going to play it one and a half times and it's going to finish in like 45 minutes. Yeah. But it's like, whatever. Like, I can get back to what I'm doing. But, uh, yeah, we'll see what that shift is like. Uh, For me, it was pretty intense. A big a big shift? Yeah, because I remember when I was full-time, when I was full-time at Sherwin-Williams and at Amsbury's and then part-time at um, doing pottery. And then I also worked at the pizza place to for tips. And um, that's when I also bought my house. And it was like, I was so fucking busy. I, like, never slept. I worked all the time, you mm-hmm. know. I work 18 hours. I'd work 12 hours at, or 10 to 12 hours at Amsbury's and then go home and work for six hours in the studio and then go to sleep and do it all over again. And then, and then the minute I, and then I was making so much shit. And then when I became full time, I made the same amount of shit. Like it was the exact. <laughs> so you made the same amount of stuff. You made the same amount of money, but you made less money because you weren't working for the other entities. <laughs> yeah, probably. Yeah, and like, and I would just drive around Sultan and like go say hi to the ladies at the bank, and then, you know, and then I go say hi to my friends, and then, yeah. you know, and it just it's like this weird shift. That's like, if you don't have anybody else counting on you, well, and it's probably different because you have Rachel. So I didn't have anybody. So it was like, well, there was nobody relying on me, relying on you. If I pay my mortgage, you know, it's fine. Um, Yeah. But I didn't have anybody. So it was, it was like, well. Maybe that $3,000 a month in investing is your, your somebody. Maybe. Maybe. Yeah, I've had to find somebodies that aren't people. <laughs> well, maybe that's your something that motivates <laughs> you. That it's like I got to get to this three thousand. Yeah. Um, I know what the thing I was thinking about earlier. It was about discipline and like, um, realizing that the things that you do and the time that you spend doing things that distract you, how much of it has to do with just disciplining yourself and just getting into habits of either avoiding things that you know are going to put you off the path and distract you versus saying like, I'm treating myself because I'm like rewarding myself for putting in the work. Ah, that's good. Avoidance versus reward. I like that. Well, not, yeah, it's like avoiding because you know that it's detrimental versus saying like mentally saying oh i'm treating myself i deserve to get some instagram time because i worked in the studio for an hour and a half yeah and then you get I, lost I in it for 45 minutes <laughs> yeah i definitely am of an avoidance person as opposed to a treating person yeah i think uh little things like do not disturb help putting your uh mm-hmm. phone down so you can't see it Oh, yeah. Today I um, started throwing like, OK, so I try to throw. Oh, also what I found. This is good. Also, what I found. Oh, I'll come back to what it, this morning. But um, I think it's really important to figure out how your body works too. like. Are you one of those people that needs to take breaks? Or are you like Heidi needs to take breaks or, you know, Heidi Fehrenbacher schedule breaks? Um, yeah, I remember in her episode, she was like, I take breaks. Lots of breaks. Okay. Yeah. And then um, I'm one of those people that needs to not take breaks. So when I get into mm-hmm. the studio, I put in my earphones and I get right to work. And, like, today I left my phone, like, on the wedging table or something and did 50 crumbles, which are small bowls, in 50 minutes. You know, I'm one of those people that needs to just not take breaks. Like, today mm-hmm. was a great day for me for motivation. I don't know why. I think I, it took me, like, four days to get into the out-of-vacation-slash-sick mode. But, um, yeah. but like, you know, 
uh, 50 crumbles. And then I knew that once I was done with those 50 crumbles, it was going to be lunchtime and I'd take lunch. And then when I did the other thing, uh, when I did Roy's, I did 15 of those. And like, I set the time. I don't look at my phone the whole time. I don't do anything. So you have your earphones in. I'm guessing your phone's not buzzing and like it's on do not disturb or it's you're not hearing dings of people texting you or no notification. Well, ideally nobody texts me like nobody usually texts me, but that's why I also have the Apple watch because if I see who texts me, that would distract the shit out of me if I had an Apple watch. Really? Yeah. That's one thing that's like, it's going to distract you. It's right on your fucking wrist. You don't think you're getting distracted. You don't think you're losing time and not losing time as in like the three seconds that you look at it, but like, Are you are you going into it for a couple minutes? Are you going no. into it and no. like setting you off? Okay. No. That I just look at me. it. I look at it, see who t- who texted me, make sure it's not important, and then I go back to my work. And then okay. once I'm done with that f- fifty minutes, then I'll check it. You Do know? you find yourself? Does it mark it as red when you look at it? No. Oh, it doesn't. Okay, that's good. Mm-mm. I was like, I could see that you read it. You and then go totally away from forget. it and you forget about it completely. Yeah, no, I, I fucking do, do that. that. I pick my phone up and I'm like, what the hell was I opening my phone for? Oh, yeah, I was going to like open this app and look up this one thing. And I'm on Instagram for five minutes. I'm like, what the fuck did I open my phone for? <laughs> I do that all the time. I almost texted you today and was like, could you please remind me that we have to do a podcast? Because today was just like a super forgetful day for me. But anyway, I so I come in and I just I make sure that um like the way that i start okay so the way that i started doing uh production at rebecca's was um the way that dusty does production okay so dusty comes in and he's a completely different person than me so this is what works for him um he comes in he throws 40 pieces or 32 pieces he takes a break he comes back, he throws 32 pieces, he takes a break, he comes back, he throws 32 pieces, he takes a break, he comes back, he throws 32 pieces. All the same pieces or just 32 or crumbles, like, 32 plates, 32 of this? Right, like he does it in sections, okay? So okay. he fills up his rack and then he goes and takes a break and then he comes back and fills up his rack. I tried that. So I would do like one shelf and then I'd take a break and I'd walk around and then I'd do another shelf and I was there for like eight hours every single day because it, I like could, it breaks your flow like you get into the flow about yeah. two-thirds of the way or halfway through it or something and then yeah. you're like severing that flow exactly. intentionally so it completely breaks my flow and so what helped me was realizing that i'm one of those type of people that i'm competitive that's also a good motivation thing i'm competitive and i'm competitive against myself which is helpful um but like so i would so now what I do is, like today, what was on my list was 50 crumbles, 16 Roy bowls, and then I didn't have anything else really on my list, but I did some other stuff. What's um, a Roy bowl? Is that like a serving bowl? or? Yeah, it's three pounds, and it's like nine inches wide. So okay. they take a little time, okay? Yeah, it's so, a bigger bowl. Yeah. Um, so I got... In I started weighing out my clay, put my earphones in. Also, I have to have both earphones in because I get distracted. Um, both yeah. earphones, only music, and weigh out all the clay for 50 crumbles. And then I start the timer and make all 50 all at once. And then once that's done, I can take a break, you know? And then I throw all the Roy Bowls all at once, and once that's done, I take a break. Do you and find yourself counting when you get close, or is absolutely. it like, all right, how many do I have left? How many do I have left? Yeah, absolutely. Are we done yet? <laughs> yeah, for real. It's like, I'm always looking at my boards being like, okay, how many do I have left? You know? Um, but that's the way, that's what motivates me. Like, that's the way that I get through it fast. When I was done throwing today, I threw from 12 to 1. I took a lunch that was like almost an hour, maybe an hour and a half. And then I threw the Roy Bowls from like 2.30 to, um, I want to say like 2.30 to 4, mm-hmm. you know? And then I, um, yep, 2.30 to 4. And then I 
and I was talking to Val at that time. And then I took like a tiny little break and then I threw 40 of these other things. It took me two and a half hours. Maybe, f- no. Four and a half hours to throw 200 or $300 worth of stuff. You know? Yeah. And like, and then I trimmed for an hour. And like, if, and so if I had done that the way that I was doing it the first when I first came in the way that Dusty does it, I would have never gotten it done in time. It would have taken me twice as long. Yeah. You know, I think that's where like a lot of the growth and the progress and the is just persisting when you got to that point where you're like looking at the bucket of like, how many do I have left? And you just like push through it. Yeah. I think that's where it's just like some people, if you're like running or something like, all right, you're you're pushing for mile five miles or something. You get to like right. four and a half, and you're like, you know, I can go. I think I can go to six. Yeah. And you push for <laughs> it, and you're like, all right. And then you're like, oh, I fucking hate this. My body hates this. But it's like I'm gonna push to like six and a half, and then call it. And then you feel like really rewarded. So I feel like some of that is where some yeah. people have that in them to like keep pushing, and then it just builds on top of it the next time you do it, and it's like, yeah. you know, it's easier and easier. That's probably how your efficiency it's better and better and yeah well and like dusty has the capability of just coming in and just doing it you know without even thinking i really have to like make myself work for it you know mm-hmm. so yeah you really have to figure out what your what your flavor is i was talking to one of the new girls at work today about that you know like you have to like she threw like 125 small pl- small pieces, and she's like, I don't know, I feel like I should do more. And I was like, No, like 130 is good for the day. You're gonna yeah. kill your body if you do any more. Yeah. You know. Yeah, I think there's probably a hey, if I spend you know 30 less minutes doing something, it's it could pay off. You know. Yeah, that's what I was talking. Like it's like you could be here for eight hours and do. 200 pieces or you could be here for four hours and do 130 pieces every day and then the next day you're only here for three and a half and then the next day you're only here for three and 15 minutes you know like you could cut your time down or you could just kind of go at a steady pace and something another technique that i learned from just software development some people don't like digging in and doing the same thing like some people like code for hours on end but there's a pomodoro method which is like a it's basically just a timer method it's just like doing something for 45 minutes oh yeah and then the timer goes off and you stop what you're doing you don't finish you don't like say all right let me get to the stopping point i'm almost there you stop and you take like a five minute break get your coffee or go to the restroom take a walk or something and then you get back to it and you focus for another 45 minutes yeah and you or you like change tasks i think that for ceramics it's easy to do that you could work on something for 45 minutes get to a stopping point stop take a break and then like do a different task it could be i'm gonna glaze 30 things for 45 minutes which seems like it seems like kind of a waste sometimes because i'm like i'm only glazing like 30 pieces it seems like i'm not gonna fill a kiln or i'm not gonna fill half a kiln with the time i'm spending because usually i'll glaze for like four and a half hours or six hours because I want to have enough that I could fill an entire kiln plus another half of a kiln. Usually right. is how I glaze. But it's like, hey, I could put handles on mugs for 45 minutes because I hate doing handles or something like that. Yeah. Maybe that's what you do. Do something you don't like for 45 minutes, and then you're like, all right, well, I know I'm going to get a break, and I know I'm going to be able to choose the next thing I do. Yeah. So you yeah, throw for 45 idea. minutes or something like that. Yeah, I think that, like, I mean, we talk about motivation, but really, like, coping mechanisms for how to get things done is the biggest, the biggest thing, you know? It's not even about motivation at that point. And, like, also, also, it doesn't fucking matter if you're motivated when you own your own business. Like, you have to fucking do it. Your motivation is your bills are going to be due, like... Yeah, you have to do it. Like, it's not inspiration at that it's point <laughs> insp- yeah it's not inspiration based it's like oh you have to put food in your mouth based so you know like at it's that point buck up. it's kind of buck up a little bit but it's just, yeah <laughs> i don't want to say bug up buck up but it's like oh, well God. you do you gotta buck up it's like 
you got to do it if you don't feel good that day. If you don't feel like making stuff, like that's no excuse. Like you're to the point where Charles, Charles, um, like even a painter, you know, that has to get inspiration. Like they still have to paint every day, you know. It's what we do. Or you gotta, I mean, you gotta reply to emails and you gotta get yeah. back to people. You can't just say, "All right." I'm just not going to reply to that stuff until Friday. <laughs> like I do that. I'm We're getting better about finding time. A lot of times I'll just say, all right, I'm going to leave the studio at 11 o'clock tonight. That way I have an hour so I can pack my order and I can reply to a couple emails that I haven't replied to. Yeah. And that never happens of the replying to the emails part. <laughs> um, usually I'll just find time during work or something and say, all right, I can yeah. reply to this. Man, it's fuck. It's like, um, I'm gonna be part of the Indiana Clay Conference. Uh, me, Josh, and Rebecca are all gonna be on a panel, <laughs> and hopefully the whole building doesn't burn down from our craziness. But, um, uh, but there's supposed to be like some cup show or some shit like that, and uh, and like. I keep he keeps sending emails to us like you have to submit your cup to the show and I'm like I don't want to I don't want to submit. Do you even cup. have a cup? I have one cup that I saved and it's the best one. I don't know if I want to sell it. Is it for fundraising or what is it for? No. It's just like the featured talkers are gonna. No, sell. I mean like they're having an actual ex expedi- exhibition, like an exhibition cup show. But you okay. have to do it, or I don't just, know if we have to. It sounds like they're trying to get people to do it because they don't have yeah. as many people as they want. Yeah, and then we have to like drop it off wherever, and I'm like, that just sounds. That's that like sounds when like work. I. That sounds like a lot of work that I don't want to do. Um, and like uh, <laughs> when they're like, oh, we're looking for people to do, you know, um, talks and whatever like demonstrations and uh, i I texted him or i emailed him about it and he was like yeah you can just send me a pdf and i was like i'm out (laughs) like or no it was a no it was a A powerpoint PowerPoint. it was a powerpoint and i was like i'm out (laughs) nope (laughs) like you said powerpoint no (laughs) (laughs) like we don't do that here (laughs) not in this space (laughs) it's like can I like record myself talking to you on like a video and just tell you what I'm going to do for like a five minute video rather than even like a three minute video rather than right. I'm not going to I'm not going to do an entire PowerPoint presentation to give to you. Like I'm not for, a fucking teacher, man. I like, think that, yeah, I think that's where that they're coming from there. I don't they're even like, know okay, how to you're, use PowerPoint. Or you haven't made a PowerPoint since probably college or something high school maybe high school uh, yeah rebecca was like did he read your biography like Which said i am becca <laughs> i make pots i am a potter i'm a potter <laughs> i'm a potter and then your second sentence was like i make pots fast or something it's like, <laughs> yeah <laughs> well, yeah so oh, yeah He's i think figuring out happy. figuring out what works with your personality you know what time you work most effectively, how can you say no effectively? Remember, no once a day keeps the psychiatrist away. (laughs) So, um, the only, yeah, the only other things in here that we mentioned in here was selling at shows. I think we previously have said, like, I'm pretty motivated at selling at a show because when I get home, I'm like pumped up about how much I sold and I'm in restock mode of what I do, what I have been doing at the last few shows. And I've done it in the past every now and then, but I'll actually start making a list of things that I need to restock, like cereal bowls in this specific color. And I'll take that home with me because I already have almost everything out that I'm confident is going to sell at a show. So I, this is like my best work at the show. So I'm kind of like, okay, this is a good time to like get a lay of the land, see what had sold, what I got left, what I need to restock on. So that's where if you got a slow day at the show, like don't just sit there and like Instagram on your look at Instagram on your phone. Like, is there something I can do that's beneficial? Yeah. So that's something I do to be more effective when I get home. Yeah. So I have an actionable list. 
Action journal. Yeah. Also, if you guys like journals, um, find an action journal. I think they're it's a an Is orange. Is like color. a bullet journal? Yeah, the the one that I had was really good. I want to say it was Behave. I feel like I saw that on somebody's Instagram. That wasn't yours. Was it was it? mine. I think it was Lind. I think it was Lindy's. Oh, it's Lindy's. Uh, yeah, Action Journal Notebook from Behance is really good. It's seventeen fifty. Um, and the inside is great because, oh, I got the orange one. They have a green, a blue, a red, and an orange. Um, and it's really great because it has, like, bullet points that you put on the side, but then it has a grid pattern on the inside. And I've used that many, many years. I want to ask you something. How many different planners or journals have you bought in your past? A lot. Do you use them? Yeah. All or most of them? Most of them. Okay. See, I, mean, I feel I like there's certain people no. that buy those that have this intention of doing something that is not in their lane of like how they work. Oh, like yeah. I'm going to bullet journal or I'm going to calendar. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. And they maybe it's just because Rachel has bought journals endlessly for the last number of years. So we have like seven journals here. But um, you like try something out and you're like, all right, this bullet method might work. And some of it's just like figure out something simple. Yeah, no, I definitely think that trying to find the right system can be difficult. And like, you have to buy all these journals. And obviously, journals are cool anyway. Like, I do (laughs) like journals. I mean, some um, of them she's bought because the covers look cool or something. But yeah, they're only filled in about a 20th of the way, because you get like four pages in and then you're like, all right, I'm never gonna look at that again. (laughs) Yeah, but, like, you know, when I bought planners and stuff, like, um, uh, like, I would buy calendars, and I fill those out, and, yeah, I mean, they got, a lot of those calendars got me through Christmas, you know, like, Christmas, nice. wintertime, and, yeah, I do use them, like, this action journal, um, I used in college, and I actually don't know how much of it I did use, because I rip out the pages that aren't, uh, in the past, yeah, that are in the past. Yeah. Uh, yeah, we had those in high school. You get the, the book, and it's got the lines for, like, here's yeah. this class, this class, this class, this class on every single day. So you can jot notes down for every single class yeah. every day. So what helped me and what, like, made me be able to do this method and, like, to do write everything down, and also why I have no fucking memory anymore, is um, when I worked at uh, Amsbury's Painting... I literally was required to write everything down. Like my boss said, you have to write all of the things that we're doing down. Um, because Just for documentation, I, so you remember yeah, like how to do it without asking? or Yeah, and like I can't rely on your memory, even though my memory was really good at the time. And um, so I had to create methods that would work within the parameters that I was doing. And, and was so that for that, somebody else to consume if they needed to? Yeah. If you were gone that day? Yeah, or something like that, yeah. And so I had to create, like, systems and stuff to make, like, action journals. Because every yeah. day, you know, you're dealing with 20 different painters, five different jobs, you know, 25 different customers that you're talking to, and 5,000 different yeah. emails and <laughs> all the things. And so I... I had to create like a system. I went through like seven different systems to try and figure oh out what gosh. worked for me. And I finally found one that worked. But um, yeah, I, I mean, like. I am like, in my mind, I am just a fucking cork board with a bunch of post it notes. <laughs> That's what I, I mean, I told you yesterday or two days ago, like, my note section on my phone is like 325 notes. It's like, yeah. I am just a habitual individual page note taker. Either whether it's like this week, Sunday through Friday, and then I'm going to jot notes down for what I need to do those days. And then it's going to go in the trash at the end of the week. I am not a single planner, one spot to write everything down in. I'm like, all right, this note is related to work. So I'm going to put it in this folder and it's going to be with this stuff. And then it's searchable. Like I know I documented somewhere, but it's a bunch of random little notes. Like I just have paper that is like the back of the. Yeah receipt or something from 
a, a invoice or something that's in the box that shipped to me and I'll like use the back of it because it's blank because I don't want to waste the paper. So I'll like write my notes on there and it's just a bunch of random notes. I'm 100% a yellow pad. Uh, preferably though, actually preferably though, I would much prefer the box graph paper. Oh, like yeah. The ones the ones for the engineers graph paper. use. Yeah. Yeah. You the used in like paper. geometry class and stuff. Yeah. Or the ones that just have the dots. I fucking love dot graphs. Just the dots. I've never yeah. written on those. Oh, oh, it looks like this. Are those for like drawers and stuff? No. Oh. But you know what's great about these is that you can. I don't like that because there's no line. I mean, there are lines, I guess, but I would feel like I'm just writing into the void. I like it because when you get bored, you can connect the dots and make little yeah. things. Um, but uh, yeah, like I'm just, if you gave me like all those journals, they do work and I have used them in the past. But if you just gave me a fucking notebook, that's what I'd want right now. See, I would get confused with where things are if I wrote everything in one notebook. But maybe if I had sections of like, all right, this is related to my commissions only this section is related to my week to week yeah and then this one is for my uh, how much clay i weigh out for these specific forms like i would want to group it out so it's like organized in some way so you'd need a planner for that yeah yeah i'm not gonna do that though no yeah, because I, me, I'm I'm worried that like I'm gonna lose it or something. Or... Right. See, like you, your mind thinks in sections, right? So you're thinking in. This is related to this, so I'm gonna document it here. Yeah, commission shows this. My mind is related to time, so I'm thinking January, February, March, April. Like yeah. this is everything I need to do in January. Like I'll even get a fucking. Like the calendar, I'll print out the calendar on like the Apple calendar and write wow. in the calendar what I need to do each day and when Ooh. things are due. And my days would get too granular to fit on there. Yeah, I would get I would get overwhelmed with the granularity. Yeah, that it would just freeze me. Yeah, I'm also a full thinker too. Like I need to see the full page, you know. And like okay. you could separate it out, right? So like you, if this I could is probably great. print that out for a whole week and be like, all right, right, this is my whole week, and I could jot, yeah, some things down for the whole week, and like, it's probably not a bad idea. Yeah, but this is great because we do think so differently in the way that we like do things, and I'm sure there's a lot of people that identify with me where you're like, okay, I need to see the time. I don't really care if it's connected in space, mm -hmm. you know. And then there's a lot of people that are like you that are like, the time's not really my issue. It's more separation of ideas, you know? Yeah. So. Wow, I can't wait to listen back. To the different episodes? Yeah, and see how we... Wow, Charles, that is... Is that six or seven? I think it's six. I think you're adding an extra one every single time you say it. I, I think it's more like three, but... It is not. We had <laughs> we had four like an hour ago. I promise. Um, if anybody wants to do a review, you should. I just gr me. I just group them. Like if it's if it's within like two minutes of the last one, I just group it. Like all right, that's that's the ten o'clock pass by. That's the eleven o'clock pass by. That's that's cheating. Now if it's within huh. like fifteen minutes, I'm like all right, that's a separate one. That's a separate one. Um. Yeah, yeah, I'm excited to listen to back on the first episode to see how terrible we did, but also what we talked about and if it was anything like what we talked about today. And also, I think that we should point out that if you guys want to hear another episode to, like, rehash another episode, you should let us know because this was... I thought it was fun. Did you like it? Yeah, I liked it. Yeah, I think we got to I think trying to figure out like whether we keep on track with what we're doing in here or if it's like, OK, just let it go and see. Yeah, because you're going to dig up some other things that probably relate to other people that is like not so focused. That could be a whole episode, but it's things yeah. that you uncover. It's just about your work style or, yeah, you know, what what gets you um, excited or whatnot. Besides, like, motivated, like, 
you know, are you happy about the things that you're doing? Is this commission going to make you happy or is it not? Yeah. Like, that's some simple things of just like, hey, you can say no. Maybe it's just like, say no mo- more. Yeah. Or no a day. Like, maybe that speaks with people, you know? Yeah. Or resonates with people. I hope so. It certainly resonated with me. It's great. I love it. Yeah. Yeah, uh, I think I think being able to say like, you know, I could do that, but I I'm ve- I'm so granular <laughs> with things that like I I can see the impact of like making small decisions of like, okay, what am I dipping my toe into? Yeah. Like, how far is this gonna go? Am yeah. I doing this once and it's gonna become something more? Um. So. I mean, some of that goes in with, like, relationships, too. It's, like, you say, like, all right, like, I'm fine with that. And then you're, like, okay, what are they going to ask for next time? Because right. Because I said yes to that this first time, you know? I'm going to buy a notepad on Amazon right now. <laughs> a specific <laughs> category of notepad? The, no, the the ones oh, that the, are... The, the B one? The No, not the behave one. Behave. Be- yeah. Oh, look, there's one that you can erase. There's a. Oh, this is cool. Oh, yeah. It's Rocket called a book. fucking pencil. No, 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 it's called Rocket Book, and you use like a certain pen, and you write it down in your notepad, and then you scan the QR code, and it converts it to your phone. That sounds like another app I got to download, and another account I got to create. That sounds like too much work to me. I mean, it sounds cool. I'm not gonna buy it. I'm just saying. It's Those cool. kind of things build up that I'm like, I'm not going to sign up for another app. I'm not going to put my, I'm not going to create an account with that because then I got to log it. No. Yeah. Do they have checkout with PayPal? All right. I'm cool. Let's do PayPal cool. checkout. Fuck that. I'm not putting my credit card in another, another random website. Okay. I'm going to get the Amazon basics graph paper. Nice. It seems a lot. It seems like a lot of money, like for a fucking notebook. Also, it has to flip up, not around. It's got to flip up. Oh, so you can see progress. What? You can't see your progress. Oh, because you like actually keep you see it the open. Pages flippy over. Well, the thing is with that, you can just keep it open. You're not breaking the spine by. Well, I guess it depends on if you're using like a spiral notebook. You can just keep it open. But yeah, I never thought of that. I wonder if there's a something mentally with people that have the things that flip flip up i don't on the, know on the vertical versus the horizontal yeah i don't know i like flipping up this 764 for two notebooks that seems like a lot of money i thought you were gonna say like 15 bucks seven dollars for two they're like full page notebooks i'm sure you i mean school's getting back in why don't you just wait and go to fucking Walmart and buy or Walgreens or wherever and get a I notebook want, for like 15 cents? I want the graph paper. <laughs> you don't think people, <laughs> kids go to geometry class anymore? I'm sure they have graph paper notebooks. I doubt it. I'm sure you can get those things for like a dollar, less than a dollar for a notebook. Loose leaf. Wow. These are expensive. It's just expensive. Why is the world so expensive? Anyway, moving on. We should probably end. Um, <laughs> when, you, when you were when you were in school, did you have different color notebooks for each class? No. No. Are you kidding me? That's how that's how I organize myself. Like I would have like, okay, this English notebook is the red cover, and I wrote English on the bottom, and then my like science one was green, and my math one was blue. So I know which one I need to get out of my locker and stuff when I was. I'm going to be completely honest. I don't remember. You probably had one notebook to rule them all. (laughs) One notebook. You just had a one inch thick notebook (laughs) for five classes or whatever. I might have actually. Um, No, I don't know. I wasn't a huge note taker in high school. Um, I. I don't know. I honestly have no idea. I don't remember that part of my life, and it's not because I was alcoholic or drugged or whatever. I just don't remember it. And like then those I would are the end up this semester with like 
a bunch of notebooks that had like 25 pages left in them. I do remember we went to a bonfire and burned all our homework at the end of the year. Almost got the fire department called on us. Probably pretty cathartic. It was uh, my friend. Never going to use that again. (laughs) Yeah, my friends built a huge tower of wood that was probably 10, 15 feet tall. And we burned it in their front yard. Jeez. Yeah. (laughs) It took forever for that fire to burn down. God. 3 a.m. Gosh. All right, Becca. Any last words? One no a day keeps the psychiatrist away. A dollar's a dollar. And if you need money, find it. (laughs) <laughs> just all the things <laughs> I just think of my dad that says all these things like I understand that and like I'm just telling you <laughs> alright uh, Carlos my mm. mom always says well it's a hole in the ground don't fall in it like when I would say well she's like well it's a hole in the ground don't fall in it or hey Straw's cheaper, grass is free. There was somebody I worked with in uh, at the end of college that he would say, like, yeah, but. And he would, like, he's like, what's a yeah, but? And he, like, drew this guy that was, like, a character. <laughs> and he just had a big butt. <laughs> yeah, but. <clears throat> did I ever tell you about that one time that, um... oh, did I ever tell you about the, I think I did. Uh, the, I lived at my professor's house over the summer. Um, when while he, he was gone, yes. While he was, yeah, I think I told you about this on the thing. And he, on the trip, and so he was gone. And I lived at his house, and he had a, um, he had a canvas in his bathroom that said, but you didn't. Yes, you told me this, but I don't think it was on the podcast. Yeah, so that's why I figured I'd say it again. So, um, yeah, so because everybody's always like, yeah, I could have done that. And he's like, yeah, but you didn't. That's fucking great. Yeah, but you didn't. Like, and I've always, that's always stuck with me. You know? That's great. It is. But you didn't. But you didn't. Three words. There you go. I could have made $5,000 on a painting that had one line on it. I could have made that. But you didn't. (laughs) 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 (sighs) Do you have any last words? No. (laughs) You just killed it. You just dropped the mic like three times there. I mean, I can't. I can't top that. I can't top that. Oh, all right. We'll see you guys later. All right. Bye. Bye. <laughs> Where did you mention that? I feel like it was a... Wasn't it must it have that, been on the road trip. It, it, you were talking with somebody that's a... That was a, an artist, though, I think. Was it Mark? When we were eating with Mark? Maybe it was. Yeah. For some reason, I feel like... Hmm. It might have been Mark. Yes, that's what it was. It must have been Mark. It was Mark, yeah. All right, what are we calling this? Motivation as a maker? Yeah, hashing just, it out. No. I'll just say motivation, and then we'll... Yeah. Um, 107 is what I have. Yes. How do we always habitually go right to midnight? Well, I mean, we always shoot the shit for 30 minutes and then we get started, so. Well, nobody seems to complain as much. Uh, I was kind of feeling guilty the last couple. We hadn't hit two hours, so we were kind of on, I a, know. on a lull. I looked at the clock at 1.08 and I was like, we're never going to fucking make it. <laughs> on this episode? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> See, I have my my screen right now is... The browser, it's got the notes, and it's got your face in Skype. So yeah. the recording is actually on the other desktop, so I don't look at the time. I swiped over a couple times, but 
I wasn't really looking at it, so. Take two. That's what it should be called. Take two. Yes, that's a good. That's a good that's one. It. Take two. <sighs> so are we? It looks like we're going to be good to record with Isaac next week. Okay. Do we also want to do another recording of the two short ones? Because I feel like we need to get into our groove of getting a couple what? ahead. This is stressing me out being like the same week. It's, Dude, it's, it's like, a lot. I don't like it. It's like, oh, we got to do it. Shit, something's going to come up. Yeah. I agree. I'm not a fan of this. Especially when you got to edit it the same week. It's like, I mean, not that I'm, I'm sure you got the editing down to Pat, but. Um, yeah, it's easy, but it's just like, ugh, I liked it a lot better when I didn't have to worry about it. Yeah. All right, so I'm going to move these questions down. And this new com computer is pretty nice. Good, I'm glad. I enjoy it. If you got if you got a new one like this, would you have got the mouse with it or a trackpad? Are you a mouse? Mouse, mouse yeah. The only yeah. thing I don't like about the mouse is when I'm on the audio and stuff, like you can hear me clicking. So that's the only negative I can. Yeah. No, but. I'm definitely a mouse person, 100%. But I don't know, like, if I had to pay extra for the mouse, I'd probably get an off-brand one. I think it came with it. Um, mm -hmm. Well... I think the mouse came free with it, but if you got a trackpad, you had to pay an extra like 30 or 50 bucks or something. Yeah, I would never pay for the trackpad. I did pay extra for um I paid extra well, I paid extra for the extra ports on the computer, but yeah. Yeah, I don't think I had to pay extra for the for the uh keyboard. Yeah, the keyboard and mouse came with it. I mean, that would make sense, right? Cuz it's a fucking yeah. computer, right? Yeah. But yeah, it's got the, and actually the bottom of it is blue. Oh, really? Nice. Yeah, and then the keyboard is, well, the bottom is white, but it's blue, and it's got the little. Um, That's cool. It's got the Touch ID on the top corner here. Oh, nice. That's so, nice. It's pretty sweet. The Touch ID, I thought I was going to hate it. I fucking love it. So is it actually a button on the MacBook Pro, or is it? Is it just a a spot? It's a it's a button. Okay. See, um, mine I can actually push the button and it'll lock. Yeah. The screen. Yeah. Yeah. Must be the same. Yeah. I'll here. I'll send you a picture. It's right. It's that black spot in the corner. Mars, you're so good. Playing here. Did you like my video today? Oh my god, I laughed so hard. Rachel was like, "What?" She's like, "I'm not the one." No, Marble's the one. Marble's the one. Oh, here we go. Somebody goes. Lloyd just needs to realize he needs Babs. <laughs> oh, so that's a button? Yeah. <coughs> oh, it just looks... Oh, it is a button. Okay. It just looks like it's part of the flat surface. That's pretty subtle. Yeah, I like it. Nice. I don't know how I like the touch part, like with the volume and stuff. Um, It's not terrible. And what's cool is that, like, you know... Like, the escape is up there, and then if you uh, go into, like, a website or whatever, and it wants to do predictive text, you can put it in. Or, like, if my credit card is, you know, my credit card's, like, in the computer, so I can just hit the credit card on the, the little Oh, text. sweet. It's nice. Like, like pre-fill text or something like yeah, that? Yeah, and it's especially super nice in, like, Photoshop, Illustrator, because it has all the shortcuts on the top. Yeah. Yeah. It's it it has its moments. It's not for everything, but it has its moments. Yeah. Is the um Well, yeah, I feel like I never use the escape key anyways, so. Yeah. Is the Is there an option to hit like audio 
and then talk into it like speech to text on your computer because that's one thing that i'm like i wish i could use that that is not talking to sire but um sri um i got it that i would like to do that because i do it on my phone sometimes like when i'm replying to instagram messages or something like that where you just speak into it and it yeah it's pretty good but actually i mean i see a microphone thing on here but i wonder if that's actually what that does i wonder here look i'm gonna open pages i wonder if there's like, that's what my f5 button has a microphone on it but it, i don't know what that's for Hmm. Okay, and what's cool is like I just opened pages and on the touch bar it says new document, so I can just press new document. Uh-huh. See, I would feel like I would feel like I'm moving my mouse around and then I would be like, okay, now I can push that thing up there. Or you're on your trackpad and you're like, all right, now I got to move up to this thing here instead yeah. of like doing it with your mouse. Yeah, I don't know if you can. We should Google it. Can you voice to text? I feel like it would need to be like focused on a field and then you would hit a button. So it it says Apple menu, system preferences, click keyboard, and then click dictation. Keyboard. Dictation. At the end. You can turn it on. Use dictation whenever you can type to start dictating. Use a shortcut or select start dictation from the edit menu. Okay. The shortcut is... You can choose whatever you want, so you can hit, like, a certain button twice, or... Write command key twice. Okay. Let's that's, try that's, it. That's kind of cool. cool. Is it Hello, listening Ryan. to me talk? This is Becca. I am typing right now. This is so fucking cool. Hey, got fucking right. Nice period so you turn dictation on okay and then you have to put the period in you say period period that Hello. worked great it didn't type it though are you in pages no i'm just no, I'm on just the on... Google. google i'm just in the address bar How to throw pottery. Oh, there it goes. Okay. Okay. Cool. 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 I gotta go. I'm fucking tired. My neck hurts. All right. We'll chat uh, later. Okay. All right. Bye. Bye.